Phase. Good evening and welcome to the first of my October streams where we'll be using MAME to look at a variety of ZX Spectrum games. Now I'm doing this stream because uh, Sir Clive Sinclair passed away last month at the age of 81 and you know he, he was responsible for the Spectrum which really put uh, computing in the hands of a lot of people who may have otherwise not had, a, had computers including myself. So I think without a Spectrum I may have never actually got into computers, may never have ended up doing MAME and so it's a system that is, is close to me and I wanted to do a sort of tribute stream where I look at games I remember from back in the day and some newer developments on the Spectrum and anything in between really. Some good games, some bad games, some really bad games. There's a, there's a fair bit here. Now, the stream does have the potential to go quite wrong today because I installed Windows 11 last night and this is the first time I tried streaming using it and so some settings might be a bit messed up. I'm noticing the microphone is reporting is clipping there a little bit so I might have to turn that down slightly. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's mess with this a little bit. Try this. Uh, I don't know. Is it going to turn down? Is it going to turn up? I don't know. That might be better. Okay, I've turned it down a bit because it was saying it's clipping and I, I don't think that's a good thing. So yes, there are plenty of, still saying it's clipping, there are plenty of bad games on the specy, Stephen. So um, yeah, if there are any sound issues or volume issues, just uh, let me know because uh, Windows kind of forgot all my settings for that type of thing when I installed 11. So fingers crossed. <laughs> you sold your soul watching this uh, color. Anyway, um, so I better say hi to everybody who's in the chat because a lot of the regulars are here again and that is always good to see. Here we've got uh, Carlo who has expressed his uh, dislike of the spec e for with a meh. We have Aussie Guy who usually throws in lots of facts about the arcade games but I'm not sure there are going to be so many facts about the spec -y games but I may be surprised. I mean this one I've gone on to start is uh, by Hudson Soft. It's probably the only reason it's got in the track mode actually. I struggled to find Spectrum games within a track demo but since this was a Hudson development I guess it's got some arcade sensibilities. Uh, we've got Cow who was uh, saying that pole position is on the Spectrum and that's close enough to final lap. Uh, the, the pole position port on the Specky is kind of bad, but you, you might have a look. Uh, also asking if, if WC the Monster 24 is on the list. I wasn't planning on playing that one, but that is a good port. We were playing some other racing games, though. Uh, we've got T. Lanas uh, telling me a story about a cat and a mouse. That was kind of amusing to, to, um, to read. I mean, my cat also ended up throwing up on my new jeans that I hadn't even worn yet. Cats are cats, uh, but uh, yes. Thank you for the uh, nice little tale of the cat and the mouse, Tilanus. That was a nice one to We've got Thomas, uh, and greetings, as as MJ so eloquently put it, Shaman, um, and um, we've got Bob, who is wishing a happy 78th birthday to Clark Griswold and a happy 82nd to Crocodile Dundee. Now, I didn't know that, so I've added a last-minute entry into the potential games to play uh, for, for Crocodile Dundee. Um, so you keep scrolling. We've got uh, Stephen, uh, the good old Speggy. Yes, the good old Specky. I'm sure being from around these parts, you, you are quite familiar with it. And also, welcome, welcome. And um, I think... That might be everybody who's in the chat right now, but it's always good to see you. And if anybody else is watching, that is, you know, that's always good too. I mean, like you say, you don't have to drop messages. I just appreciate anybody who's um, come along for the ride even. So um, I'm going to turn the volume back up. So about here, I don't know. And I'm going to go with my horizontal view. Now I made all the views for this stream, even though... As far as I know, there are no Spectrum games that run vertical, so I, I kind of wasted my time doing that. Um, anyway, what I'm doing? Full screen it. I'm trying to play it. Right, so this is Driller Tanks, a game from 83 from Hudson. I mean, Hudson, you know, well known developer, did loads of stuff for con uh, consoles like the PC Engine, they've got their arcade games. Best known for things like Bomberman, which, you know, had a version on the Spectrum. Not what we're looking at today. We're looking at a Driller Tanks, which I don't think has a direct arcade equivalent. But, uh, you know, should be a good fun little one to start the stream with. It's a simple game. It is a game I had as a kid. Not the best playing game, but you can tell it's uh, a simple early 83 Spectrum game. It's a maze game. You can drill through the, uh, the dirt, which slows you down. And basically, you've got to blast the creatures before... 
they get to the palace. If they get to the palace, you lose. If they blast you, you lose too. Those are the ones they're not trying to get to the palace, just these pink ones. Now, interestingly, this is basically a re-release of a game that was um, also under a different name. Uh, we might have a look at the, the other version in a bit. can't remember the title off my head. It's quite a strange one. But yeah, we've got to try and get these things and freeze them before they get us. And that wasn't a very good strategy because I got got from behind. Yeah, Cannonball uh, from Hudson was also released as Bubble Bust on the Spectrum, as Aussie Guy mentions there. Um, yes, that was also on the MSX, I believe, as Cannonball. And the Spectrum seems to have versions under both titles. Oh dear, I'm playing this quite badly. I did practice this a little earlier, but, you know, it's not going quite so well this time. But yes, um, so it's interesting to see Japanese develop games on the Spectrum because obviously the Spectrum is not really a machine that was even known in Japan. So, especially when it's a developer who went on to do big things like Hudson, which is why I started it off with this one. Because, you know, Hudson are a big developer. Now, I don't know if you can clear the ma clear all the blocks in the maze. I don't think you can. So I think it's just a case of blasting the enemies. You can't blast where there's dirt, so you have to clear out the dirt first. That's the basic mechanic on this one. Yes, the Spectrum does have the infamous colour clash. There are a few things that work around that a little bit now, but they require um, good timing. And our Spectrum emulation, unfortunately, doesn't emulate that. So uh, we, we can't run the games that use the 8x1 attribute mode where it's just changing the, the attribute table every line because they're based on you know knowing the entire screen timings and when to change the attribute table between lines, which um, is a funky little trick, I have to say. Uh-oh, nope, got caught. <laughs> So this game, you know, it's, it's deceptively uh, simple, but it's actually, you know, quite tricky. Yeah, Hudson in general seem like a competent developer. Everything they put out has some level of thought into it. I mean, you know, there's so many companies just putting out very rough Pac-Man clones at this point in history. And here we have a game that, yeah, it's, it's got elements of the, the maze genre, but it's not outright Pac-Man. And you see, there's, there's intelligence of the creatures too. When they see you, they charge at you. It's, uh, look, they, they come more quickly and then they avoid those other things. There's, there's more to it. It's, it's, you know, for an 83 game on a home computer, this little thing has got uh, more thought than many of them. I mean, half blocks of dirt give you half score. Those other enemies regenerate the dirt. Yeah, it, it's simple. I think it, you know, it's one of those that would run on the even the 16k spectrum models. So it's not a demanding game, but it's it's a nice little challenge. I mean, it's not one I really enjoyed that much as a kid. I prefer the bigger, newer, more impressive games. But if this was the only game you had when you got your spectrum, it's all right. Um, hey, Melody, welcome. I pressed joystick. <laughs> that was stupid. That means I've got to play on the number keys. Which, um... Yeah, uh, the Spectrum joystick, uh, at least one type, basically acts the same as the number keys. So if you do select joystick, you can sometimes play on the number keys, which um, is one of the oddities of the system. Yeah, Stop the Express is a great one on the Spectrum from Hudson. I think I played that on the stream before, I wanted to. I don't think I'll be playing Stop the Express today, but yeah, Stop the Express is one I had as a kid as well and really enjoyed. It got a sort of sequel, there's a challenge on the NES too. Oh, that's too close. Uh oh, no one trouble. <laughs> Why does the drilling sound like cartoon signal clicking? Because that's the glorious Spectrum beeper sounds, cow. These, uh, say, the uh, the original Spectrum models only had, uh, you know, a one-bit beeper channel. Basically, they didn't have any kind of dedicated sound chip. The Plus Two, one to eight models, the like, did have the AY, and we'll be hearing some nice AY tunes in a bit. But uh, yeah, these early models, just the beeper sounds. So. I'm going to play this game on this set, and then I am going to load up the other version of it uh, for a brief, maybe single game. Ooh. There we 
go. Hey Mick, welcome, I hope you're doing well, good to see you. Uh, what's the oops? Has something gone wrong? Um, I hope nothing's gone wrong. Or is the oops just uh, my gameplay? So yeah, so you can sort of group the enemies, but that does carry risk because if they're too closely grouped, they would charge you down like that. Apparently that got me. But yeah, as well as Spectrum games, we'll be discussing some other sides of the Spectrum. So just things like the loading, loading schemes. I mean, a lot of what we're going to be loading on this stream is going to be from tape. So, uh, you know, get used to uh, cassette noises. I will be speeding through them like at that 1,000% speed. But still, that still means about a minute to load some games or so. So you're going to be getting a fair bit on the tape noise side. But, you know, I want the stream to be semi-authentic, not just loading snapshots or loading from disk buses. You know, not many Spectrum models had disk drive. You get a disk drive accessory and you get the plus three, but pretty much all the software came on tape. It's very rare. The disk-based games were very rare and only later on, really. Aussie guy with some um, some facts from, about Hudson. They were formed in 73, um, named after the Hudson 464 train. Hmm. That's, that's funny, because you've got the Amstrad uh, 464 as a computer, which is unrelated. Uh, it began as an amateur, amateur radio shop called CQ Hudson, and their first game was Getsu Men Chakuriku, which I have never heard of, and I don't know what was on. Um, yeah, C64 versus Spectrum is an interesting one, Stephen, because technically the, the C64 was far better. But uh, sometimes the Spectrum games were, were better, better versions. I mean, Chase HQ, I think, is one of the classic examples of that. Uh, the ZX Spectrum does not sound right if you pronounce it ZX Spectrum, uh, no melody. Or somebody in another stream pronounced it uh, uh, Z-Cross. Um, I, I don't know if they've, they got the PlayStation, but uh, that was an even stranger way of hearing it. But, uh, yes. Okay, so that was Driller Tanks. And as I said, there was a slightly different version of that, which, for the sake of the... the you know the stream we will have a quick look at now this is where you get the loading noises so if the loading noises are too loud I can turn them down right I'm gonna speed through it this is a fairly short load in the first place so this one was called Ita or I'm assuming this is an earlier release because if you look at the uh, track demo it's a bit more primitive and it's only got hit space to begin rather than um, a keyboard joystick. This seems more like an actual MSX port than a, something that's been adapted for the Spectrum properly. But you see, the names are different. The colour scheme's different. It's pronounced Zux. Are you trying to say it sucks, Thomas? You see, the, the names are different. The colour's different. The lolly tank is broken. Hmm. Evening, Costardo. I hope you're doing well. Uh, moon, lang moon landing. Uh, mm, yes, I, it makes more sense if you say moon landing. But yeah, they put... So, so the translation is very rough in this version. Now, the sound wasn't the best. There, were, there are some good uh, beeper tunes, but uh, yeah, overall, I I much preferred the the good old um, AY tunes you could get on some of the, the, the later models. Anyway, you see, you you get all the instructions. It explains the bonus life in a different way, and it doesn't have the "you're doomed." It has just game over. So you know, but it's the same game otherwise. Now I'm assuming this was actually released on the Spectrum. It's not just somebody ported it from the MSX back just so there's the original version. It's kind of hard to know with these things, but there is, you know, there is a tape image with this name. I don't remember ever seeing it with this name, but. Um, who knows? But you can say it's the same game. It plays the same. So there's there's no real reason to continue um, playing that one. Uh, what we will do is look at uh, one of the new games on the Spectrum, though. That um, I've seen them play other people play on other streams. But it's a nice... It's a monochrome one, but it's a nice uh, demonstration of what the Specky could do. Are there really 
99,999 stages. Uh, maybe, Cow, maybe if you've got long enough to play for that long. Hey, no Joto, welcome. Good to see you again. Um, so if anybody's got any of their own memories of the Spectrum, please let me know. Um, this one this one is uh, usually a 13 minute load time, so let's speed through it a little bit. Uh, Eric and the Floaters, yeah, that's the um, the version of Bomberman. If we've got time, we might do that near the end, Costado. I have done that in a stream before, so I don't want to, you know, cover that too much, because it's one I've looked at before, but I might do that near the end. So we've got a, we've got a really nice loading screen for this Travel Through Time, Voyage 1 Northern Lights. And that's the thing, even if the Spectrum visuals are really limited, if you use them correctly, you can still create some nice art, as you see with the loading screen here. The Specky was your first, second, and third computer. Did you have a, a bunch of models then, Cosado? Hudson's second game was released in 1981 on the FM, Fujitsu FM7. Aldebaran. Again, not when I played Aussie Guy. So yeah, let's speed through this. Because 30 minute load times are quite long, but this is a 128k game that I'm loading on the Plus 2 model. And this is a new development from, I think, this year or last year? Can't quite remember, but it's a recent one. And, you know, it, say, it is monochrome, so it might not look as flashy as some racing games on, say, the CPC, but what it's doing is, is very impressive, so um, it'll be loaded soon. I did play the uh, Drift game from this company on a previous stream, which was also very impressive for a... 3D racing game. So here we go. Loading complete. Press any key. We we'll get a bit of music. <laughs> it would be more authentic if we didn't strip speed through the, this tape loads. It would, but then you wouldn't get to see much of the games because um, <laughs> some of these loads are quite long. At least I'm not fast loading them completely automatic. You get to see a bit what the loading was like. So a nice little tune here. Yeah, 2021. This is from this year. So throttle, brake, left, right, gear. Now you can buy a physical copy of this, which does come with an OST CD if you want to play music from the CD instead of the chip tunes. So, a nice little animated intro here. Now, this isn't the Drift game. This is a new racing game they did. Yeah, Robocop. I think Renegade's another one that uses a lot of um, memory in 128K mode. <laughs> um, yeah, you don't anymore. You used to, Custardo, when the... Uh, TZX decoding wasn't quite right. There were quite a few games that failed their loading. So no time. This is just a pure drive section. You see the nice smooth animation on the car here and the road. So it's not in colour but visually this is very impressive for a, a Spectrum racer with all the scaling and, and racing and the speed. It runs fast too. Oh, I meant to really slow down on corners there. Now, no, no, no in-game music. I guess if you've got the CD, you might have, but some pleasant enough engine sounds. But it's you know, it's got corners. I think it's got hills. As a racing game engine goes on an 8-bit, uh, yeah. If you've ever played things like uh, the port of Outrun, you'll know just how rough they could be. Really, it's, it's nothing compared to this. yeah there we go this has even got gates over the road like that you know overhead objects and that's what you're looking for in these these um, racing games on the, these machines because it's so easy just to put a few basic objects at the side of the track that don't really scale but then when you've got things that go over the track you've got your hills you've got your bends you've got your corners uh, I put my final lap skills to the test and travel through time I, I will try Cal I will try uh, the Spectrum didn't have any different resolutions, no Eugene, it just had the this resolution. It's The CPC is the one that could do a lot more resolutions. The Spectrum had, you know, the 
area you could use normally than the border area that you can't really use for graphics properly. I mean, people have done these days, but uh, for like effects and demo type things. But in general, you can't really use the border, you, and you can't change the screen size. Uh, what people have done more recently, as I mentioned, is uh, sort of do screen timing effects to change the attribute table every line so the colour clash becomes 8 by 1 instead of 8 by 8 um, but again that is quite expensive to process because you've got to keep your game code running in, in sync with the entire screen uh -oh. yeah I, I got hit by a train Woodson Soft was acquired by Konami in 2001 Konami took, took full control in April 2011 to Aussie guy and um, Hudson Soft was shut down in, Mar in March of 2012 and merged with Konami Digital Entertainment. That's kind of a sad end to um, Hudson, really, considering. But yeah, a lot of Spectrum games will go for the monochrome option to avoid the color clash or do everything in sort of 8x8 tiles to avoid it. Yeah, I failed the first stage, so um, that wasn't a great start, was it? But yeah, as you play through the game, I think you do get to select different cars, or uh, play as different cars, hence travel through time. It starts in the 50s, it advances to other eras. But it's just, you know, the smooth animation on the car is impressive. Yeah, let's try not to get hit by a train this time. Generally, a, a good tip. But yeah, if you fail, it does send you back a little bit. Now, some of these will run a little bit faster or smoother in main than they should do because we don't emulate all the um, timing delays, unfortunately, which again is why some stuff doesn't work. Yeah, this would have been great back in the day. Yeah, it's a. It, if you're looking at them, they are a little bit plain, but sometimes you get nice detail in monochrome games anyway, and good shading. It doesn't kill them completely. It's when you got monochrome ports of, CPC, of uh, Spectrum games on the CPC that was a real shame, because the CPC could do, do so much better. But um, yeah, you, you, know, you had to choose your, your methods on the Spectrum, and monochrome was one option. I mean, I, I say I wouldn't have minded this back in the day, even if it's in monochrome, it, it plays well. Maybe they could have added a bit of colour on the car. I, I don't know. I'm not sure it needs it. I mean, WEC Le Mans does that. It adds some colour to the car and a few objects. And Super Hang On, I think, does the same. But, uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah. Let the train go past. There we go, you see. Let's not get hit by a train. <laughs> Why is Uncle, Uncle Bjorn wearing his scarecrow's mask? I do not know. Maybe that's just what Uncle Bjorn enjoys, Bob. So there we go, got to the finish. Now I'm not going to spend too long on any game. Just want to give the you know give you an idea of what they're like and say this is one of the impressive new games. You know where it makes sense in things like the cutscenes they've used good colour. Came to the right place to race. Yes, I am new here. Oh, I'm Sven Larsen. Don't get to enter my name. We can skip the cutscene. <laughs> it's a time trial with a time limit. And again, the, the time limits on this, from what I remember, are quite strict. You have to race well. I remember watching um, Zypho try and play this, and he, he failed a few of the races. But yeah, it's interesting the tricks they use. I mean, I'm sure that they're, they're drawing like things like the trees in shadow like that, because it's uh, you know much easier to do, much less processing power if you're only drawing the tops you can see. It's a bit cheeky, but I'm sure that there's uh, 
logic behind the way some things are done here. I'd be surprised if there wasn't. Because that's what you find with these these um, these games on the spectrum. The uh, the smart programmers will find ways to do an impressive effect that actually also makes it cheaper to uh, make the game work. Oh, that was a bit of a sharp end. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I I enjoy it, Costado. I think I don't think they could have really done any better on the spectrum with this uh, for a racing game. Uh, maybe if you prefer more colourful racing games, yeah, the the probably ones on the CPC that do a better job. Um, but back in the day, I would have been really impressed by this. It's miles ahead of a lot of the games that were released. At least in the genre, you have to consider that this is all being rendered in software on a Z80. Uh, <laughs> And that's quite impressive. So come on, let's try and at least complete this this uh, time trial. Then we'll move on to the next game. Yeah, I think there is a lot of skill gone into this. I mean, if we look at, I'm going to look at one of the uh, developers' earlier games too, which is a really colourful one instead. So it's not like the developer doesn't know how to use colour. They just know when they can and can't because there's another game they did called Valley of Rains, which is the 48k Spectrum game, which is really impressive, and um, I would definitely be looking at that. Are we going to make it? The thing, the fact this has got the bridges and the different road patterns, and a good variety of trackside objects. It's. Uh, say this this combination of having all these elements isn't something you often find uh oh nine eight seven you've got this little countdown here to tell me I'm gonna fail this too aren't I I'm gonna fail this say whoa, that one crash has probably cost <laughs> that was the finish line <laughs> That one crash really cost me. That was the finish, the finish line. Anyway, I, I failed the stage. So, yeah, you get the idea. Um, you do need to practice the game to be a bit better at it. Um, Hudson Soft's very first third party for the uh, Famicom NES, their first game on the system, is Nuts and Milk. That is one I've played, released in 84. Again, uh, a little fact from Aussie guy there. Right, so let me move these two to the Now Have Played list. Um, <laughs> let's have a look at something that's actually kind of funky. Now, this is one that I was hoping would actually have a um, vertical mode, so I could use the vertical layout, but it doesn't. And this is a modern development. This is um, the Pac-Man emulator. This only runs on a plus 2A or plus 3A. Plus, no, plus, plus 2A or plus 3, or plus 2B, I think, because those systems allow you to uh, remap the zero area, I think, from ROM to something else, and the game relies on it, because while this is called a Pac-Man emulator, it's more of a port. It does use the original ROMs, but it patches over them with routines to, you know... A, Call use the Spectrum hardware, so it's running. It's running the original Pac-Man code with patches applied, rather than being a true emulator. You could kind of say it's emulating the video hardware if you want, but it's a push. But it's called the Pac-Man emulator, and it's uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty funky to see. I would have to say. So yeah, this is version one point six. I had to add version one point six to the software list because um, it wasn't there. I had to add the last game to the software list too. There are older versions in the software list, but I've noticed since the software list was done, there are a whole bunch of releases of this that have been missed out. But um, yeah, we can have a look at it. It does have a variety of options to uh, change the color scheme, so I can select a blue maze if I want. But, uh, or we can select a red maze, or a pink maze, or a green maze, I don't know. Or we can just go with the white maze, that's the default. So, again, you know, this is... It is just Pac-Man. But it's kind of impressive. I mean, I think the uh, the plus 2 plus two A requirement would have been a bit of a, a killer back in the day. Because that's really limiting your market. 
but if they'd found a way to do a port like this at the time and yeah there's color clash and no you can't really avoid that but you know it's pac-man that plays like pac-man and if you've played <laughs> a lot of the uh, the ports of pac-man from back in the day you'll know most of them didn't yeah pac-man is a uh, glowing in this one. Pac-Man is clearly radioactive, as are the ghosts. But I would imagine all the arcade patterns work in this one, because it is running the arcade code. There you go, a little flash between the level. It's a little slow at times, but not, you know, not so much it's going to put you off trying to play it. Yeah, so I wouldn't have called it an emulator myself, but you know you can't really do emulation on a, a, on a Spectrum. It's got a you know a, a three megahertz Z80, but a support, yeah, yeah. You can turn, you can run it in a monochrome mode where the you know there are no colours, but colour mode with colour clash, it's not affecting the gameplay. So it's just a shame there isn't an actual uh, vertical mode, or, you know, a, a Tate or Tate, depending on how you want to pronounce it, mode. Because I think being a, you know, a Pac-Man emulator, it would have made sense if it had a turn your TV on its side mode. And then I could have used my uh, vertical layout and shown that MAME can rotate the image. But it didn't, so maybe that's something that the uh, developer could add in the future version. But your you cutscenes are intact because, again, it, it is running the original code. <laughs> Kill screen coming up. Are you talking about killing me? Or you think I'm going to reach the kill screen? Yeah, so this is a recent development from the last few years. And it's another one of the sort of what could have been at the time had somebody put this level of effort into a port. Because clearly, the Spectrum is capable of running the original code to a degree. Um, but the thing is, back then the developers were not given access to the original resources and code. It was, you know, the games were programmed from scratch, um, just you know, based on playing the arcade games. Uh -oh. Yeah, this is this is kill me screen. But, uh, yes, <laughs> Ray Trace Pac-Man says Johnny. Hey Johnny as well. I hope you're doing well. And hey Mass Ninja, I hope you're doing well too. I really should make my chat window a bit bigger because I've realised it's sort of half the screen, and. I'm probably missing lots of comments, which is um, not great. AMC, uh, yes, it that uses uh, tile-based graphics, basically. It moves everything in chunks of eight. It is one that is on my list to look at, Mass Ninja. So, yeah, um, Pac-Man clean. It even has the attract mode, again, because it's running the original code. But um, an impressive little thing for the Spectrum, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, definitely one that I wanted to feature on a stream. But there you go, so it'll run the demo mode. I quit out of it now, and I will make my chat window a bit bigger so that I can see everything. <laughs> yeah, that, that racing game was much better than Outrun, wasn't it, Mick? Uh, Outrun was a little disappointing. Uh, Bomberman must have bombed Hudson Soft, says no Johto. Um, unfortunately, that may have been the case. Or well, Konami did it on their behalf. Um, right, where should we go now then? Um, yeah. Uh, right. Move this up. Uh, who's not missing much? I'm not missing much. Now, it's probably going to be a quieter chat this time because I know Spectrum's not everybody's cup of tea but that's fine I think this is the one that uh, was mentioned yeah Astro Marine Corps so this is a this is one way the developers did get around color clash fancy loading screen here and this this has a loading game it's got a mastermind loading game you know um, it's a bit laggy on the controls. So you're trying to guess things. I'm not very good at these games. Yeah. 
Ooh, I think I've got two in the right place, or two in the... I don't know. Yeah, that was meant to be 1518. So, yeah. It's kind of uh, kind of funky that they programmed in a loading game. And it's, it's not the only one. The other ones we might see... Um, Okay, that was completely wrong. Uh, anyway, you get the idea. It's a loading game. I'm not going to play it for six minutes while the game loads. Apparently that was six, four, eight, four. So let's just speed it up, which apparently acts like I'm pressing one all the time. But never mind. I'm losing all these games. How many Mastermind games can I lose? But yeah, this is kind of funky. Uh, you know, a loading game on the spectrum while it loads from tape. So yeah. From Creepsoft and Dynamic. As you can see, it's sort of moving in tiles, but it does mean, you know, they don't have colour clash. Now, I don't remember this being a very easy to play game. It's a bit of a run and gun. So it's basically a, a contra knockoff type thing. I won't say knockoff, that's a bit unkind. But, um, I think I got eaten. My chosen subject is Clive Sinclair. We will have to look at some of the, uh, the games featuring Clive Sinclair shortly, too. I mean, they're not great. But, oh, okay. Every time I walk there, I get eaten. Okay, that's a bit of a mean trap. Trap, but uh, Spanish games for you. Now this is unusual that it's got sound effects and music. Most games, you know, will have one or the other. Or they'll do with the sound effects on the um, beeper and the AY music. But this one gets both. You see, you've got a uh, a bit of parallax background going on, like it's got two layers, even though it's not, even though, you know, this is all tile-based. I mean, it's not really tile-based, but I mean the movement's tile-based. Another trap. Another evil trap, and back to the start. The future games themes got stuck in your head, no joke, uh, I, I do get tunes stuck in my head from time to time, too. It's, uh, it's one of those things that happens. Not always game music, uh, except maybe some of the Dizzy tunes. They always get stuck in my head. You might try and avoid playing Dizzy games, I don't know. Obviously, it's, this isn't too smooth because of the, you know, the way it's moving in 8x8 tiles. And they're doing that to avoid the colour clash because the, you know, the attributes are 8x8. So if you move in tiles, you, um, you do avoid that clash. There we go. No, take me up. Yeah, Dynamic did a lot of games on these 8-bit systems. They were often very difficult, but they were usually colourful and quite interesting in their own way. So let's take it down there. Past zone 1. So that's a checkpoint. Uh, yeah. Probotector. Yes, exactly. That's exactly how everybody remembers it. But it was Grise or on the um, the eight bits here. Well, so those traps are mean because there's no indication that there's anything there. So it's an arcade-style name entry screen. You can't use the keyboard. Kind of makes sense if you were to try and put it in an arcade cab. It's a bit odd on a, a computer that does have a uh, keyboard. But yeah, Tim Follin does some really good soundtracks, didn't he, Stephen? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, I've got grenades as well. I always forget about the grenades. But, um, but you just have to learn where the traps are on this, and so you will die quite often. It's kind, of, it's bad game design, but you, know, you find that in so many of these uh, these games. I guess it's how they make them take longer to complete. I mean, you can get to the right to the end and then find you've walked on a trap, and uh, that's it. Yeah. 
there were, there were some fantastic composers on these uh, these systems, and sometimes they went on to compose some fantastic tracks even on other things at like SNES. I mean, when you consider the AY and the arcades, most things are just using for very simple beeps and everything else, or they have a, a you know a whole bunch of them put together just to do simple sounds. Then you've got something like the Spectrum where you've only got a single AY and you, you beep a chip and yet you've got some really good soundtracks. So it's a bit slow this, but um, otherwise you can see if you had this back in the day, you would have no doubt been impressed by it. Watch out. We've got a three-way now, you see. It's like a good old... Oh, yeah, don't fall down the pit. That one was a bit obvious. No, oh, my bones. Back to the start of the section. Yeah, the music is a little upbeat, but, you know, you can't complain. It keeps you in a good mood while you're playing it. Otherwise, you'd probably be swearing at all these unfair traps. I don't know if I can jump over this. Yeah, I can. I can be a little bit cheeky and jump over that now. I know there's a trap there. Energy. You can't jump over it either. Okay, I don't remember how you do this bit then. Maybe I have to grenade it. Yeah. Now, I seem to remember last year's CPC dev, or was it the year before, had... That was stupid. Had um, a theme on the competition where you could include something from this from, for bonus points. That was on the Amstrad CPC then, I expect it. When this life is over, well, this you know, when when it's game over, I will be moving on to another game because we've got plenty to look at. Oh, I completely forgot the trap was there. And anyway, that's game over. So, enter my name. I will pass on entering my name. You get the idea. Nice, colourful scrolling game. Very playerful. Very playable and. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's an enjoyable, enjoyable title that one. Um, I will, will with that, move on to the modern game that is kind of similar. This is Valley of Rain. Again, this is not in the software list. The Spectrum software list still needs a lot of work. I've noticed there's still a lot of things miscloned, and either me or somebody else is going to have to go over them at some point and pick that back up. But it's just such an enormous task. But yeah, Valley of Rains. Let's get this loaded. Same, same company that did the driving game. C creep at the high score table for Infinite Lives. I I'm not sure Infinite Lives would save me, Mass Ninja. <laughs> but, uh, yes, gromph, gromph. That is, that is an eating sound, if ever there was one. So this is a 48k Spectrum game, so it's going to be beeper sounds. But um, it's kind of impressive that it's a 48k Spectrum game, believe me. Now, there were impressive games back in the day that were similar. Um, Savage is another one. My mother is Water Lily. Your father is Ant. Okay, yep. Hey, Tetrafish. Welcome. I hope you're doing well. Infinite Death at the same once. Yeah, that'll probably be what happened, yeah. So you can redefine. You can go up, down, left, right. Fire. Pause. Got a bit of a tune here. Now, I'd say this was clearly influenced by the game Savage. But... You see, nice tune done on the beeper. Evening, Mo. I hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Anyway, again, it's got a soundtrack CD if you buy the physical copy and want one. Otherwise, that's your music. 
and you're in the dead forest. Now, again, look look at the layers of layers of parallax here. Yeah, it's a simple run along and shoot things game. Jump over things, and it's got a few puzzle elements too in later stages. But it's colourful, and again, it's using a similar technique of moving things in blocks, but then a few extra tricks to make it look like the background scrolls more smoothly. You know, it's got um, it moves those. It's, it's still moving the trees in blocks, but the background behind that more smoothly. It's a it's a fancy trick that makes it look more impressive. And obviously, the way things explode, they're all sort of eight by eight tiles where it's exploding, so you don't really see the colour clash much. I'm not doing very well here. I'm almost dead. That will fall on me. I think taking your time might be more important than trying to rush through everything. Yeah, they do overlap as well, which is really impressive. Nope, dead. There we go. Took quite a few hits. And then we go into a different area. You've got your windows, you say your castle bit. Different attack. But this is all in 48k. This isn't even a 1 to 8k game. This would run on, you know, your 48k spectrum. Which is one of the older models. Not the 16k model, but the 48k model. So, flower, if you want to pick. And so, again, let's say the same company did the racing game. You can see the same developers. I say company, same developers. Um, again, you can buy a physical copy. But you can see, if they want to, when they want to use colour, they know how to use colour on this system too. So, uh, you can't go in the gate yet, as far as I know. I think you have to, have to kill the, the birds. There's a second one. But yeah, you see, from a technical point of view, this is another very impressive modern Spectrum game. And we will say, we will be ending up looking at some really bad old games too. But I, I you know, wanted to get things off to a reasonably good start by looking at some of the uh, some of the recent games that... I mean, these aren't even ones that are pushing the hardware as hard as some of them. These aren't using the fancy tricks that certain other games do. There we go, go through the gate. Yeah, they've not got the most advanced, complex gameplay. Because the Spectrum's got a lot of games like that too, where they've actually got really deep gameplay. And uh, maybe we won't be playing too many of those today because they take a lot longer to get into and a lot longer to play and understand. But that should be considered too, I think. There are, there are pl there's plenty of variety on the system to keep you in. Plenty of creative games, good puzzles. Now, yeah, the jumping animation is not very advanced. You just basically jump straight up in the air. But does it matter? Second bird just sat and watched his buddy die. Indeed. <laughs> I don't know if she's uh, Lorna's cousins. Uh, they have another one called Angels in Development. I look forward to that one too then, Stephen. That, that would be a good one to see. But you can see, again, lots of layers of scrolling. It's... All very fancy. I'm not going to spend too long on it because we're already almost now into the stream. But I, I highly recommend you check out this one if you like this type of game. Like I said, I think there are a few puzzle elements later where you know you have to do things in a certain order. Good, good variety, extra enemies we've not seen before. But also, you know, make sure to check out older games like Savage, which I don't think I play on the stream because we've played a, a few games like this now. But, uh, Savage is another good old old game from the, back in the day with a very similar 
look at the explosions that go off in the different directions. So we lost another life. Anyway, like I say, Valley of Rains, I definitely want to check out. I don't want to play too much of it because it, it will go on a bit if I do, but uh, yes. Okay, um... I think this is the one I want. <laughs> right, uh, let's go with an older game from back in the day. Hey Evie, welcome. Uh, finally back. That that definitely took a while get, you're getting your nails done, didn't it? I thought you'd be back much earlier, but I'm glad you're back and glad you're home and glad you're doing well. And it's always good to have you watching. So, yeah, good to see you. I hope everything went well with having your nails done and you still have nails. So, a bit of Jungle Trouble from 83. Now, um, this one is because of the, the fact that um, Bob dropped about Crocodile Dundee earlier. I think it would, would have been a birthday. I, th I think that's what he said. I can't actually remember now. But Jungle Trouble has your little crocodile down there. Uh, I don't know what the controls are. can't quite remember. Uh, oh. Okay, maybe I'm just playing on the keys. I don't know. Oh, no, don't, don't go in the water. It's a stickman game. Let's jump. <laughs> Sometimes the issue with these games is working out what the controls are. See, I can get eaten by a crocodile, but that's not what I want to do. It's a bit like the game and watch games where your little, little men run in from the side. Did it have any kind of control option? No. <laughs> I just have to work out what the keys are. Yep. Paul Hogan, 82 years old today. That was, that was the one. Um, so this wasn't originally the stream plan, which is why I've not practiced it, which is why I don't know what the jump button is. Ah. Uh, yeah, Scuba Dive is another one I'd like to have a look at, Steve, and it's, it is on my list, so I probably will look at Scuba Dive in a bit, because Scuba Dive is excellent. Yeah, what, what's Jump? Right. One moment. <laughs> Time to get the internet out. In other words, look up the instruction in delay. In, uh, instruction in delay. Computing. Because if I can't play it, I can't really show you what the game's about. Uh, so hopefully the controls are on here. It says QAOP. I don't think it's QAOP. They weren't working. Oh, it's got an issue. Um... Five move left, six move down, seven move up, eight move right. Okay, um, right. So I get the axe. Then. Okay, yeah, so it's it's a bit tricky. There we go. And um, you've got to jump you've got to hop across. Yeah, it's five six it's five, six, seven, and eight, which is basically what the joystick would map to. It's kind of awkward to be honest, but there you go. So you know eight, seven is up. Um you chop down the trees, but then the monkey tries to steal the axe off you. And then the smoky steals the axe off of you. You have to go and get another axe back. <laughs> but yeah, it's got a crocker down, and, and that's the uh, general general way. Oh dear. We get to get the timing right on the button presses here to get across. And then you've got to get out of the way of the tree because the tree will kill you. So this is a single screen game where you've got to complete all the challenges 
not get killed by the crocodile, not get your axe stolen, not fall in the water. <laughs> it's a very simple game. Say it's what, from 83? Uh, I need to get the axe though. Oh, it's, it's the, no, I've not got the axe. It's the me fall in the river simulator. And <laughs> the caveman version of Space Taxi. That's not one I'm familiar with, uh, but I have heard of it. The character animation, the stickman animation is really good. I'm just really bad at this game. Uh, this is one that uh, Nikki from Nikki and Bunty Stream is really good at and can complete usually quite easily. Me, on the other hand, I couldn't do this as a kid. I can't do this now. <laughs> you get the idea. Or you don't get the idea because I'm so bad at this game that I'm giving the wrong impression of it. There we go. Chop down the tree. The monkey come in. Go away, monkey. Get the way. There. They stole my axe. You get the idea. I think we've seen enough of Jungle Trouble. It's not that hard if you, you master the timing and everything else. And it's a nice early game. But yeah, as um, as Stephen says there, it's not um, not Jarell's best game. Which I think would be Scuba Dive, which was mentioned. Which I will try and uh, look at in a bit. Ahem. Shall we go with another quite bad early game? For cow, for cow, we have pole position. Now this has got quite a funky loader, which I'll let you see for a little bit before we um, zoom through it. Uh, Rydak, the plus two models include, in, introduced the Sinclair joystick when the port was part of the unit instead of requiring an add-on like was needed for the Kempston. So generally people play more with the keyboard. Yeah, I played more with the keyboard anyway. I Anyway, I didn't really like the old joysticks on the Spectrum. They were uh, not the best built. Also, we may uh, have another look at your uh, uh, Brick Rick game later. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> so... Yeah, this one, the loader is divided into blocks. Erg wasn't on the spectrum now. And every time it loads a new block, it changes the pole position colour. Which I guess... I, the, the pole position colours, the logo colour cycles on the arcade, doesn't it? So I guess it's a sort of novel way of doing that while the game loads. But yeah, let's just skip through this because it's really annoying and it just makes the game text take much longer to load because it's got to start a new block every time. This game could probably load in like two minutes if it didn't have this fancy loader. Uh, but yes, pole position on the spectrum. Yeah, it's a bit like the bleep loader, but uh, earlier. Um, did I see your earlier question, YouTube visitor? No, I apparently missed it. Let me just scroll up. Let me scroll up. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> you call me Brian. You can a, a Spectrum game where you controlled an airship down a cave to collect people and escape as the water gradually rises. It sounds really familiar, but uh, I can't remember it. I can't remember the name. If anybody else knows the name of that one. Uh, drop it in the chat. I'm sure I had it. It sounds really familiar, but I can't remember it. Hero? Um, I thought Hero was the one where you bomb walls and things. I don't remember water in it, but maybe I'm getting them mixed up. Uh, you thought they might be... Uh, mm. There were other games... I mean... I remember games with water rising. There was Rainbow Islands, but obviously that's a different game. But I remember being really scared of games where the water rose as a kid because it's like, you're going to drown, you're going to drown, you're going to drown. And it, yeah, there, there was definitely more than one that I had. So yeah, uh, what we're going to do here then. So yeah, this game... Uh, S is start game, one keyboard. Right, this is one of those pole position versions where you auto-accelerate. 
and you just change the gear and brake if you need to. So we're in low gear at the moment. Don't need to change yet. But yeah, I'm playing this because obviously Cow really likes Final Lap. And this is sort of the game that Namco did before Final Lap. The more famous one, Pole Position. And yes, it did get a port to the Spectrum, but, you know, even for the Spectrum, it's not the most impressive of racing games. It's somewhat unresponsive. But there were quite a few versions of Pole Position on the home computers that did have this auto acceleration, acceleration mechanic. There you go. I crashed. Was it Hero then? Ah, okay. That's uh, so it's been a long time since I played Hero. Um, but uh, yeah, I must be getting lots of games mixed up then. I remember, I say, I remember the bombing walls and going down part of Hero. I just don't remember the water part. So, Cow, how long do I have to play um, Pole Position for? Yeah, the problem is the collisions are bad, the, the sprite movements are all jerky, the sense of speed's not too bad, but I say there were far better racing games on the Spectrum, and you don't really get a gradual sense of speed either, it's either fast or slow. There's no real in-between. Uh, yeah, I'd rather take the, uh, the the new travel through time racing game over this, um, or many of the other Spectrum games. You know, WC Le Mans on the Spectrum was a fantastic one too. But uh, yeah, there we go. I came in sixth. Oh, uh, Zub for the music. Um, I can note it down. I've got a huge list of things I was going to look at, but. Uh, I can have a look at that one, possibly. Oh, that's the one where you jump up the platforms, isn't it? The Mastertronic one. <laughs> that start line drawing is so slow. If you like pole position, you like final lap count. 2021. But yes, this is the closest you're going to get to a final lap on the stream count. Yeah, Zub is, is very simple but addictive for uh, climbing up the moving platforms, isn't it? It's one Zypho plays a lot on the CPC. Uh, I can have a look. I mean, some of them probably won't run too well in main because the emulation is not perfect. I've not tested Zub, Zub, so it's possible we could have a, a, a fail on it. But we, we will see. We, we can have a look at it in a bit. It's like, for some reason, Duet doesn't run in main. It locks up as soon as you load it, which is kind of odd. And yes, okay. I think that that's pole position for cow. I mean, it's a, a, an early racing game. Um, <laughs> you give me permission to move on, Bob. Yeah, I think I will be moving on. Um, in fact, yeah. Since we got a request for Zub, let's quickly have a look at um, Zub and see if it works. Speed through the loading a little bit. Fairly standard loader. A bit lazy that it uh, raises the title screen with the next load bit, but. Eighty six from Mad Games, Massatronic Added Dimension. Produced by Binary Design. I've not played Dragon Talk, Stephen. Um, not played that one. So here we go. We're still on to yeah, okay, we're good. So yes, um, a rather busy looking uh, main menu here. Looks like uh, sort of one of those 
this is what a computer looks like in the movies things. It might be running a bit too fast because, again, MAME doesn't really emulate the timings properly on the spectrum. So let's redefine. Let's go jump, crouch, left, right, fire. Hopefully that's okay. And we've got a scanner and a pause one. Okay. So you've got, you can swap between your map and your energy bar. You can pause it like that. Which apparently was a bad idea. There we go. So yeah, you get on the platforms and then they move along. And um, if you duck, you can move them around. And that, you get, go to the edge, the barrier kills you. The idea is to get to the top. And not do that. And not fall off. <laughs> and I'm completely out of practice on this. And it's got one of those sort of... See the health bar where I'm turning into a skeleton as I go. So yeah, it's, so this view is easy because you can see where you are relative to the edges. Now... Oh, still doesn't help him do that though. What, this game has a few nasty tricks like uh, there are multiple exits for each level. So you can see at the top there the three arrows on the map. And if you take the wrong exit, you'll end up going back stages rather than forward stages. So, yeah, get rid of you. You've got to find where the platforms are. I don't know, I'm saying it there, so... And obviously, avoid getting knocked off, because if you get knocked off, you're right back down at the bottom again. And you're starting all the way from there, no, like that. Uh, Zub has a hidden game. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that from back in the day. Wasn't that also released as a standalone game on a covered tape? Um, I seem to remember something like that with the hidden game in this one. Because I had the cover tape version. I never knew it was hidden in this until um, many years. What am I doing? Well, that was silly. I did not escape the planet. Um, I could put it on easy. But yeah, this has um, a certain quality that exceeds a lot of the other games on the spectrum at the time in terms of presentation. There's a lot of thought gone into the different elements. It's a very simple game concept. Some people might just call it frustrating, but it works. Oh yeah, I want the radar so I can see where I am. Now I put it on easy so there should be less enemies now. Sometimes you, you, you're lucky when you fall down and you don't you know you don't instantly hit something. I mean you do hit a platform and you don't instantly fall to the ground. So, if they're positioned kindly, sometimes you're okay. Yeah, I think there's only one enemy at a time on easy mode. At least on this stage. I mean, another game I really enjoyed was uh, Werewolves of London, but the, I have to say the CPC version of that is a lot better. Just for the extra colours and the uh, lack of game-breaking bug. Although that has been fixed with patches. Okay, so I think this is the exit in the middle. Yep, so my shooting accuracy was 19%. <laughs> I have beat level one. So this is to say, this is this is where it shows you the route you've taken. So that exit led it to three. Now, there'll be different exits on this level, and some will take me back to two, some will take me back to one, the other one will take me back to where I need to go. You get the idea. Uh, it's a nice little get off the top of the screen platform game. With one enemy it is quite easy. So yeah, with, with more enemies you get knocked off more frequently. Kind of 
kind of cute, that one. But, as was mentioned, this would, um, would work quite well even on a, a modern platform, say a mobile game. Or I'm sure they could turn it into a, a, an arcade ticket game where they somehow make it unfair. Uh, back at the bottom. Yeah, you, you have to learn the exits. I don't think that they're randomised. Yeah, Binary Design did do really good games. They're all well thought out, well designed, well programmed. Um, but anyway, I think we, we have seen a, a bit of Zub. Um, it's definitely one to, to check out if you've not played it before. Um, right. Um, let's have a look. Right. Uh, well, I'm just look, looking through my list of what I can have a look at. Hmm. Let's have a look at that one. Now this is one I always liked back in the day. This is an old one and uh, the company that made it have quite a few really good games actually. This is Android 2 and it is from Vortex Software. And their games have a sort of angled perspective so that they look a little bit 3D. So, 1QOP, there we go. Yeah, this is, a, this is a classic. This is one I, I spent a lot of time playing without ever even knowing what I was doing. In fact, I'm not even sure I know what I'm doing today. But, I mean, it'll probably tell me the instructions. Uh, destroy the fire. Yeah. Okay, so destroy certain things. Shoot the head three times to kill it. There you go. Different things, and you have to avoid the mines, and yeah. You get the idea. Again, this is really well presented, as are their, their other games. A cyclone is one where you fly a helicopter and you've got to avoid a storm and rescue people. Uh, TLL is a, a flight one. It's kind of similar, but plain. Anyway, I've, I press yes for instructions again. I'm not paying attention. Keyboard. No. <laughs> Highway Encounter. I mean, that was uh, that is one that everybody really liked, but it's not one I have much personal experience of playing. So, yeah, you can't kill the red ones. They'll kill you. Don't stand on the mines. It will beep if you're next to a mine, so you know if you're next to a mine. So, yeah. Oh. I'm not doing well here. This is not how you play this game. So yeah, you are hidden behind the walls in places, and there were, are some um, cheeky mines hidden in places. That, um, it, I mean, it does tell you they're there, because you've got the radar, and it will beep if you're next to a mine. So you've got to shoot this thing in the head three times to uh, kill it. not get eaten by it. Let's try this again. No. Yeah, this for 83, this is really impressive. This is one of the genuinely visually, technically impressive games of the period. I mean, I didn't, when I played this back in the day, I didn't realise it was such an, such an old game compared to some of the other ones I played, because it seems, you know, more advanced than many of them. Last you. You gonna come this way? No. <laughs> yeah, basically I've gotta try and get rid of the snake thing. One more hit and that one's dead. Now it doesn't scroll properly, as you can see it's push screen. Uh but that's a dead end, so I don't want to go that way. But still, it, it holds up marvellously. I mean, they did they did improve their engine later with proper scrolling, and uh, I'm sure they could have remade this and had it even better. But uh, don't walk on landmines, that's silly. Especially not twice. Oh dear. 
But, you know, this is one of those that somebody could put out as a game today, and uh, people would still think it was impressive, I think. Uh, you know, for the, for the spec. You're trying to kill the monsters, uh, the snake monsters, and escape the, the maze. Costa Pan Panaji made some smashing games. Indeed, indeed he did. <laughs> Android 2 Google's Revenge, says Johnny. Now, um, yeah, you see those snake things? I think you've got to kill all the snake things in different areas of the maze. And uh, that's how you beat the level. I mean, there's the counter there, you see. The number of snakes is there is, like, there's five snakes, and I've got five lives next to them. So if I can take out five snakes in the maze, I move on to the next section. I mean, the, the game doesn't really change or evolve much. But it's one of those simple concepts that is just really well done. And obviously you can learn the maze. It's not randomised. It's, it's always the same maze. A nice big maze too. And you can shoot things off screen, which is handy. So the red ones have predictable back and forth patterns. Can I get up here this way? Yeah, I can get to the snake this way, you see. Still got to somehow corner it and shoot it without getting shot. It's gone that way. <laughs> but yeah, it's chase the snake. And it's, it's a trick, tricky game. Yeah, you have to shoot the snake's head. So that's why I can't just shoot it from behind. I have to. I have to get in front of the snake to shoot the snake. Yeah, this made. I'm, this is 48k, isn't it? Yeah. But yes, you would definitely upgrade for this. Uh, I mean, you know, I, it's just such an impressive little game. But I'm saying I'm not doing it justice because I'm terrible at it. But uh, I, I know somebody was really good at it back then. They could, you know, they could wipe out these snakes like nobody's business. Go, don't stand in front of the snake, then. Come back. There you go. You see, so that's the third snake there wiped out. Um, you get the idea. Gonna go nowhere. No, I don't know why I always go that way. <laughs> but yes, it's amazing what you can do with a simple concept, but with that not a huge variety in the graphics. And you know, it also you know it doesn't really you don't notice the color clash because it's done in blocks, and the flat shading and the use of the bright attribute on the the wall. The, the tops of the walls to give you your grey and your white. It's it's impressive use of you know the limited video hardware. Oh, there's one down here. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna chase after the snake. There we go, two snakes down, and I'm dead. <laughs> dead end, yes, and I am dead. Snake Hunter 3D, that would be a good name for it. Yeah, it has permadeath. Um, anyway, there we go, there we go, there we go. But yeah, that's a, a lovely little game. Um, okay, so where next? Um, this is a, a funny one. Because this is a modern game that was made for a TV show. It's 
So yeah, this is Nosedive by Tuckersoft. If you've watched Black Mirror, then you'll know this game was tied to that show. I think, was it a secret coded in the show that you could get the download for the game from or something? It's been a, a couple of years now. I can't remember the exact method that it was um, given to you by. But uh, yeah, they, they made a game or they commissioned a game for the Spectrum. Very simple one. So probably a 16K game, to be honest. It's not really big. And it's just a case of, you know, get the balloons while they're avoiding the teeth. <laughs> but, um, again, this is one of those, it's kind of a novelty. But it's funny to see a modern TV show actually being tied to an old Spectrum, well, a new Spectrum game that looks like an old Spectrum game. You cannot read the title. The title is Nosedive with a very odd spelling. And it's a simple high score challenge game, really. And um, visually it reminds me of uh, Data East Manhattan, because that's also, that's the one where you jump on a trampoline and then you fall down the skyscraper and have to jump at the sides, but obviously the gameplay is quite different here. This is a much more simple concept. But uh, I thought I'd show it off as a funny little novelty. Uh, it might be maim just not being accurate to Vidak. Anything that's doing the um, 8x1 pixel attributes is not going to work in MAME because our screen timings aren't accurate. Or it might just be lazy programming. I don't know. I've, I've not played this on other emulators, so I cannot say. I, I'm t tending to avoid the ones I know aren't going to work, like uh, things like uh, Dreamwalker, because those, those really rely on the 8, uh, 8x1 mode. But... Um, in this case, yeah, it may be a glitch that's not meant to be there. It's a simple game there. I think <laughs> I see the un underwear on the line there and some socks. Not much more to show with this one, so I'll probably move on quite quickly, but I thought it'd be a bit of a funny one to see. Other, emula the other emulators do exist, but um, my own rules of my own stream mean that uh, you know I can only stream using MAME, so <laughs> I have to put up with a uh, not quite right emulation in uh, quite a few cases. But yeah, a, a simple little high score challenge. I My best was apparently 290. I'm sure plenty of people have very high scores in this one. I do not. What was Android 1 like? Um, not very good, Mo. <laughs> It was a much, it, much more simple and just not much fun. Um, single screen, I think. All right. Okay, let's do something a bit different. The Spectrum Plus Three model is the one with the disk drive, and people again are making new software that uses the, the disks, comes on disk, and uh, the Sword of Ayana is one such game. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of the, those, the 8-bit systems in MAME still need a lot of work. <laughs> you did make your own emulator. So... <laughs> improving it is quite tricky because the nature of the, the weight states and everything you can easily hack into the Z80 core to do it but um, the other main devs don't really like it if you take that approach so this is loading off disk there are no disk loading sounds but I can assure you it is loading something let's speed it up right there insert disk side 2 I'm surprised there are no I don't need a second doesn't recognize two drives. So here we go. So this does have an English mode. There we go. Redefine. Up, down, left, right. Fire. Fire two. Um, which game do you think is the best game on the system? I 
Yeah, this is a very long game. Uh, Zypho did long play the CPC version, but I just want to give a show a little bit of it off. Um, Fire 2 is bad news for joystick users. Um, unfortunately, yeah, most of the joysticks did only have a single fire button, didn't they? So you have to have um, your foot on the space bar or something like that. You got a bit of a story. Now, this the CPC version of this came on a, a, a special type of cartridge uh, where you could flash the game into it, I believe. I've not really studied that extensively. I know uh, Rydak was studying it. Rydak was studying it for doing some of their own development, but uh, the, say the Spectrum version is, I think, also available on a cartridge. But I'm using the disc version here. Um, probably not going to do any uh, text adventures, Stephen. <laughs> a little bit too slow paced. Plain Spooky made an MSX version of Nosedive. I wasn't aware of that mozzie guy. That's another interesting one. So, so this kind of reminds me of uh, something like Flashback, if you play Flashback. Or oh, Prince of Persia, that type of thing. You've got your arm yourself, disarm buttons. You've got your block. You get your attacks, and if you're not armed, then you can move more freely. But it's a platform <laughs> puzzle game, really, with combat elements. And you have to really work out where you can and can't jump from. Pull that. So let's run. Running jump. Oop, no, not good enough. Blackthorn the Vast on you. Yeah, it's a bit like Blackthorn too, isn't it, Bob? You're right. And as you can see, I've not quite got the, the jumping nailed down at the moment. You have to jump from the very edge, I think. There we go. And there's a door there. That wasn't even what... Did I do something wrong? I can't remember what I'm doing in this game. Actually, I can now I can attack the crates, can't I? That was that it. It's been a long time since I've um, had a look at this. There we go. Yeah, that's it. There we go. That also helps. So this is the other switch we need, and this is where we have to get our weapon out. No, nice easy enemy to dispose of to start with. Oh dear. Don't run into the switch. And that should do us over the other part. Now obviously if I can jump over the pit of spikes, there's a few bonus items for me there. Can I jump over the pit of the spikes? Yes. Some bread. Yeah. It's a bit... I, I remembered it in the end, uh, Rydrak. Yeah, this is a really impressive game, and I think there is actually a tape version too. I'm assuming it's been turned into a multi-load for tape. Another enemy down here. Now every enemy does have a pattern, and if you want to beat them, you should probably study it. But th these early ones are fairly simple. Oh. So well animated. And let's say a very big game, lots of levels, lots of areas, lots of content. Uh, I think it's. Does it have a password system? I think it had a password system. Let's go in the water. It's not fallen there. <laughs> Sir Clive was also married to um, his lap dancer for a number of years. Uh, well, you know, good on him. Oh dear, really should get my weapon out before doing that. I'm not running to wa not running to walls. Uh, 
Okay. Oop. And I think you can destroy some of the walls from memory, but I can't remember which ones. Yeah, you can destroy the ones that are cracked, like that one. But, say, there's a, a lot to explore here. And you can get lost quite easily. This isn't in the soft list. A lot of these aren't currently in the soft list. I mean, they probably need adding at some point, but the whole soft list needs, you know, a bit of work. It'd be quite easy to add it. I mean, it's a free game. You can find it on the website. I always try and run into things. No, I can't go that way yet. I didn't want to do that. See, very Prince of Persia. I fell into the trap. And it's got checkpoints. I'm back at that checkpoint. I think you get the idea. This is a, a good one to play. A, a nice little action adventure with puzzle elements. A good animation. Lots of platforming. Uh, definitely one I'd recommend. Um, so. Shall we have a... Um, Brief look at a Rydrax game. I have played this before. I'm not going to play it for too long, but um, since he has dropped into the chat. There you go, a game by Juan J. Martinez. 2021 usebox.net that is a uh, Rydrax site so let's uh, redefine the controls okay. right, left, down, up and fire and pause and quit a bit of music <laughs> yeah, you, it it is your your um, your only one to eight k game. It's got a nice bit, bit bit of music here. I'd say it's it's one of your clear the screen of enemies platform games. There are plenty of arcade games like this, say Snow Brothers and the like. And so this is a nice little modern entry on the spectrum in that genre. So we're not going to play it for too long. Play a couple of lives because I have played it before. It does look familiar. And I've not played it for a while, so I'm going to do even worse than that. There we go, you see? Knock the enemy down. Push him along. Stun the enemies. And we're going to get that ammo. And then go up to the elevator. I could have played this in the elevator stream, couldn't I? Yeah, I, I, did, I did do um, a fairly long play of this on its own stream. Not a long, long play, but... Get your level passwords, which maybe you should write down. You see, it's. Uh, I think it makes again makes good use of the hardware. It's got the color, the colors on the borders around the screen. It's not got too much color that you're going to get nasty color clash, and everything's always visible. Again, good use of the light and dark, at, you know, the bright attribute on the elevator there to give. It, a bit of an extra visual effect and the fades, the, the colourful fades are a nice thing too. You get that in quite a few Spectrum games. You can't jump down. Dynamite. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fine, uh, Rydrax. Uh, the good gameplay concepts are what keep you coming. It's nice when you get the games that are really pushing the system, but in the end, the games have got to be fun. You get a lot of games that push systems that just aren't fun. That was stupid. <laughs> so, creating a nice, fun game is, you know, the, the most important part. 
you say, I think Shadow of the Beast is the, the classic example of a game that really pushed the system where the game just wasn't fun. You see, extra enemies do spawn in. The elevator. Now, the, the original Brick Rick was on the uh, CPC. I did play that at some, an earlier point, too. I think on one... Uh, was it an earlier stream, or was it just a video? I can't remember now. Yeah, this would have been a fun game to have in the 80s, I, I agree. Uh, a lot of these recent developments really would have been. And this one, you know, I would have I would have enjoyed having as a kid. And, uh, say, enjoy giving it a little spin now. Probably only going to play the, say, the one set of lives on it, because I have looked at it before. But, uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, the thing the CPC is, uh, you can do some really good games like that. Even some basic scrolling. I mean, like I've said before, I'm surprised none of the systems got a, a port of Flicky. I mean, w why not? <laughs> I'm sure you could have done Flicky on a, a Spectrum and CPC. Even if the scrolling wasn't perfect, you, you could have pulled it off. The closest we got was, say, uh, Bomb Fusion, which is a really good game. Um, should I play Bomb Fusion? I think I played Bomb Fusion before. But Bomb Fusion is an excellent example of a single screen platform game. Uh, Redshift isn't on my list for tonight, uh, Rydrak. It might be one I have, have a look at um, another time. I don't know. This might not be the only specy stream I do. Um, in this case, you know, I'm doing it because of the the news, the uh, the news of uh, Sir Clive's passing. But um, oh, there you go, game over. Yeah, it plays a bit like a Snow Brothers and Terra Plan, yes, and um, reminds you of Astro Robo Saga stages seven to nine, the warehouse levels. Right. Um, yeah, all the you know the soccer band warehouse games as well. There's, there's that feel to it, and um, it's also a nice a nice Halloween game, and it is Spooky Month. Um, I did consider putting more spooky games in the stream, but um, in the end, I didn't. Um, so let me just have a quick look at my list of games. So I'll move that one to the top. Okay, um, I'm going to play something very very simple for a little bit. Just because it allows me to talk briefly about um, a different system. Now, in America, they did get the Spectrum machines, but they were under the Timex brand. And some games were released on cartridge and I think some were on tape. And so this is a game that I did grow up with, but I had it on the Spectrum, obviously not, uh, not an American machine. But this is a simple Space Invaders clone called Space Raiders from Scion Software. <laughs> Give this blessing to... Yes, I, I, I bless... Um, I bless Sir Clive in his uh, newfound place. I'm, I'm sure he was uh, let into heaven and I'm sure his uh, lap dancer will follow. How not to play Space Invaders. But yeah, this was probably um, my first experience with any kind of Space Invaders type game. This is the one I absolutely remember playing as a kid, before any other Space Invaders, before I ever seen Space Invaders in the arcade or anything like that. It would uh, would have been this, this clone. So yeah, well this is a simple game, and I did play it on the Spectrum, not the Timex. Um, it's got, it's got uh, fond memories for me, this one. And again, it's good, simple use of the hardware. And, you know, Colour Clash on the bullets doesn't even matter on a Space Invaders game because the original Space Invaders used a colour overlay in the first place. And hey, how are you doing anyway, Flack? You, it's always good to see you. Uh, 
Has the ogre dropped in and I, I've missed the ogre, or is the ogre not here tonight? The ogre is one of our regulars who often does the uh, the timestamps. In fact, he's done the timestamps for every single live video I've ever done. Good to hear, good to hear, thank you. So, yeah, you get the idea. This is Space Invaders. I'm not going to spend too long on it. Well, Space Raiders, sorry. But, yeah, this was my first experience of encounter with any kind of Space Invaders style game. As a kid on my spectrum. Now, the ogre, the ogres are uh, probably just busy then. Hopefully, just busy. Or maybe just doesn't like the spectrum. <laughs> I, wouldn't I wouldn't blame anybody for not liking the spectrum. If you didn't grow up with one, it can look kind of odd. I mean, why are people obsessing over machines where things tend to move a little bit slowly and have all this colour clash and these sounds? But yeah, far too space invaders, Custardo. Oh dear. Oh, well, there we go. Game over. I got 2,100 points. I think that's enough of a space raiders. But I did want to say, look at a Timex game just to just to show that, uh, say, the America did get spectrums in some form and did get some games on the spectrum, including uh, that one. So, mm, I could look at another old one. No, I want to. Um, want to. What do I want to look at? I'm just going through my list of games. Um, I've got a whole list here, and I'm trying to find the one I want because I can't remember what it was called. Ah, this is the one. Hopefully, this is um, stream friendly because some of these Mojon Twin games have a, a little bit of nudity in them. <laughs> oh, uh, and um, I can I give a special blessing to Chewbacca, uh, your cat who passed away recently. I can bless uh, bless your cat. Uh, she was a special accidental streamer. I do like cats, um, so I've got two of my own. And uh, so it is always sad to to hear the loss of a cat. But this is a Tendra Macabre, which again is another one of the uh, slightly horror themed ones. Which, if I was going to do a proper spooky spectrum stream, was you know on that short list. And it is another platform game, but it's got its own little unique uh, gameplay hooks. So, uh, B for music, not A Y. What do you see? You've got to avoid the enemies and jump around the screen. But it's got this mechanic where you can't see anything, except for when the lightning flashes. Which means you have to move rather carefully. And if you get the candle you can see, so then you can get out the screen. Yeah. Where can you go? Because you don't want to jump straight into a pit. So there is a lift there of sorts. So. The candle up here? No, the candle's. No, the, is the candle down there? Hmm. Don't know how to get down there. Um, get the candle in here. No, if you're sensitive to flashing, this isn't the best. Oh, don't fall in the pit. Sensitive to flashing, this may not be the best one to be playing. But again, it's an effective little gameplay idea. It's doing something different. And that, say, that's what you look for in these games. It's very easy to create a completely generic platform game. But if you throw in a twist, like, say, get, getting the candles here in each room so you can see, otherwise having to guide yourself by only the flashes of the light lightning it creates tension and if you want to want to create a hover game that's what you want you want a bit of tension 
You don't want to be able to rush. So it makes you take your time to go through the screens. Is there a candle in this room? Uh, it might be down there. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this this is this is a, a good one. Um, so they do have some good ideas, the Modron Twins, with their games. But like I said, not all of them are incredibly stream friendly. Oh dear, that's not what I'm gonna do. Stream friendly. They they like uh, their naked ladies. No, say no in-game music. Um, it might be nice to have some thunder sound effects with the lightning, but maybe they wanted it the extra creepy hover. Oh, no, the, the candle was down the bottom, wasn't it? There we go. There we go. Do I want to go down here? Oh, there's there. <laughs> the colour blind hating spectrum. Hmm. Well, the spectrum's palette is uh, not one you can define, unfortunately. You've got your, what, 14 colours? And that's it. Which, yeah, means all spectrum games do have the same visual look in that sense. But you can still do a lot of things with it. So I would, I would say this doesn't really look like any other spectrum game. Um, there's candles up there. Can I get up there? Not easily. Not that way. Oh. Oh, what got me? Oh, there's different enemies in this room. Okay. <laughs> Made me jump. But you see, there you go. A, a game that, uh, say, kind of rewards patience, rewards taking your time. Reminds you of the stage in Atlantis on Narzo from Sunsoft, where sometimes it's complete darkness and you need the light power up to use and to use the bombs to flash the screen a bit. Yeah, I mean the the darkness thing has been used in other games before. Uh, not always complete darkness. Um, uh, Atlantis, no Narzo is is that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I played that one. I might have um, might have played it. And it reminds you of uh, La Moon, La Moul Moulana. Um, again, I've not played that one. So I, what, what was that one on? No. But yeah, that was say that was Tenver Macabre from the Mojon Twins, another fairly recent development. Um, hmm. One of the Action 52 games uses that feature. Um, maybe it's not so. <laughs> that, that's not the best way to uh, to recommend a feature. Um, so, uh, so, Circle Life did feature in a number of games. None of them were especially good. Uh, the first of a trilogy, I believe, is uh, C5 Clive, or Clive C5. Now, basically, the three games are practically identical, all developed by uh, B. Jones. Uh, I don't know if we'll play all three. You know, they've probably seen enough after one of them. But, you know, since this is the, uh, the Clive stream, we should look at at least one of them. There's also a day in the life, which was uh, somewhat better. <laughs> Costado says, oh god, have you played this one before, Costado? Uh, yeah, I'm turning down the sound, the sound is hollow. So, Lesser Soldiers of Sinclair C5. You know, um, yeah, okay, stop. It hurts. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good luck, you'll need it. Yeah, I'm going to go with Sunday Driver. Uh, Atlantis No Nazo was Nez Famicom. I'm sure I must have played it. Yeah, you get the batteries and you move to the next screen. And um, 
Yeah, it, I think that the flickeriness here is not MAME, it's just the game being flickery. So yes, uh, Clive's other legacy, the Sinclair C5. And yeah, this is just a, a go along screens, collecting batteries, jumping over cars, because you know, the C5 is known for its legendary jumping ability. This is the type of game you would probably write in basic yourself. See, people kill you. Is it a dog? Is it a person? I don't know, but it kills you. So, yeah, th th there was that. And, you know, the, the, there was this. Because, like I said, there, there were basically three different versions of this game. Apparently £1.99 you would pay for this. I definitely bought better games for £1.99 back in the day. Well, this is one of them. This is Clive in Exile. Do you want the instructions? Oh, look. Drive through England. Drive through the Channel Tunnel. Uh, drive through France, Spain, and the bullfight, because having a bullfight makes perfect sense, yeah. Okay. Expert driver. This was 86, yeah. This is, this is, um, this, this is not good for 86, because it's basically the same game. Uh -oh. Manchester's got a chippy, though. And uh, the Midlands has got a Hoover. And Birmingham's got very little. I'm not going to get that battery. Too risky. London has, well, these things. And a tight gap there. And Dover has the Channel Tunnel. I was a 5 in 86 trauma stormer. <laughs> you see, it's the same game with different themes, and this is apparently exactly what the Channel Tunnel... There, there is grass growing in the, the Channel Tunnel, who knew? And cars driving along it. You mean to do... Oops, I forgot there was a car. I mean, I do like the brickwork in the Channel Tunnel. I, you know, very creative. But I'm pretty sure there's meant to be trains down here, not people driving through it. Or tanks. I mean, uh, apparently France are invading us. Who knew? Now there's flying spiders, because regular ones weren't enough. And there's, you know, there's some truck drivers coming to save us from the current crisis. Or is that a minibus full of school children on a school trip? I don't know. But uh, yes, it's it's like a, a stunt driver game now, but worse. And of course, there's a there's a plane flying through the Channel Tunnel. Apparently, we didn't get to France. All right, Stephen, take care. Um, I can't really do a C64 stream, unfortunately, because uh, there's not enough C64 games in main that run well from my testing. Um, I do have to do the sequels, don't I? Oh dear me. Why, oh why, oh why, when I could actually be playing good games? <laughs> yeah, those are the HGV drivers that came to help out. Not list, load. Oh yeah, um, I should say, it was asked previously, how do you load the games in main? If you're on the Spectrum 48K or the Basic, you press J for load, then shift, hold shift, and press P twice, then press enter, then press scroll lock to enable the uh, the 
tab menu. Press bring up the tab menu. Go down using the cursors to tape controls and go to play if you've got a tape mount from the software list. Yeah, take care, Stephen. I'll catch you on the next one. It's always good to see you around. So, Revenge of the C5. Uh, 85. <laughs> so this, this is probably the second game, isn't it, with the other one being the uh, third? But yes, yeah, somehow uh, B. Jones got three games out of this. So, L is for learners, P is for posers, and I is for instructions. Clive is to... yeah, yeah. Oh, this, this one's a bit different, actually. This one is a bit different. Yeah. So, this, this, yeah. This one. This okay. This is the one that actually going up the screen instead of it. It's not really very different. It's just even worse because it's got dead ends. Yeah, in professional mode, you go back to the start as well. I forgot that. Yep, same great sounds, just even more difficult gameplay. Because the problem is when you turn this game vertical, you've got less room to manoeuvre and more basic insta-kills when you spawn, because, yeah, it's, it's, it's they've made it far worse. So, look, there's two routes. If I'd chosen the left route, I would be dead, because you can't reverse. Great game design. Oh, look, it's, it's turned into Frogger. And back to the start. You should use the death sound as your alarm clock. Yes, you'd probably just not have an alarm clock after much more time, because you just smash it up and move. Game over. Oh, dear. I think we've seen enough of the C5 and its revenge, to be honest. So there we go. Um, all right. Last of the Clive games. This is the one that's actually not quite so bad. Uh, yeah. Looks like River Patrol, but garbage. Yeah, that, that was just garbage. <laughs> You imagine me rolling around in a C5. Um, I do not own a C5. Um, I'm still alive for, for one. Oh, we've got a funky custom loader. Let's speed through it anyway. By Stephen Redman in 84. Micro Mac. Up, down, left, right. Yeah, a funky load. I, I should have a look at some more of the funky loads in a bit, actually. I think this one's too fast, like many of these, unfortunately. So, I, I'm not... I don't know what the thing is in the attic. But we have to go and get our coat. The way you can move in this game is very, very strange. Basically, you can only move around the ground, so... Well, it looks like you can jump here. You can't actually jump here. You can just move up and down because you're near some, something. But yes, sir, uh, we play Sir Clive's head here. Uh, he's got a dog that clearly doesn't like him. He's got TVs that clearly don't like him. I mean, he's even got a Spectrum that wants, uh, wants him dead, which is quite bad when he made the thing. And the keys in the attic. So that's where everybody keeps their house keys, in the attic.
<laughs> Watch out for the cat. Uh, why did games take a, t uh, a while to load? I mean, they were on cassette tapes, and you can only get, you know, uh, data into a machine so quickly off cassette. It's uh, the system has to be able to, you know, read the different pulses, the different sounds, the different, you know, the different the different levels, and if it does it too fast for the machine to be able to read or for the cassette tape to support then it's not going to be able to load it. So that's why some of the fast loaders were a little bit unreliable because uh, if the tape degraded you don't have the redundancy on the, the data or if you know the volume levels weren't quite right but yeah this is uh, just you know, a buy your numbers buy the numbers single screen a platformer but I say platformer it's not really a platformer because you don't jump you uh, slide let's go back can we get out of the house this time there we go Tommy's rumbling, Clive. Shouldn't have dashed out the house so quick. What goodies can you buy before catching the train? So, you get the idea. I think I have to go into the shop. Which is guarded by beach balls. Okay. Yeah, you always had the B-side. And sometimes the B-side had a slower recording too I noticed with a few games um, which sometimes helped um, interesting loaders uh, this this game is kind of awful but it's probably one of the more interesting loaders on the spectrum so I'm going to try and find it in my list of games this is the one I think this is the one I believe it's a 48k game. Yeah, that, that's the, the better than the C5 game. I think it's the best of the Clive games. Do not be alarmed by anything strange that may or may not happen. Hmm. So, it looks like a fairly standard loader so far, this one. And, um... Still not too non-standard. Telling me not to share and enjoy. Moonstrike. So. Have we got five minutes to load this one? Yeah, we've got five minutes to load this one. It's a slow... Yeah, sometimes the B-sides have music like Outrun. There were quite a few like that. I don't think all of them are dumped, either the music sides, because there's, there's quite a few that I've not found. So, as you can see, as it's loading, it's telling the story. So the actual game data on the tape is um, interleaved with the screen data and uh, thank you to Alpha for the five euros is that today yes that is today it's popped up about the same time on the screen as in the chat so thank you very much for the five euros Alpha and uh, <laughs> thank you for showing the Spectrum stream without tape loading errors uh, yes um, I can probably show a tape loading error if you want to I think there's one or two that may need redumping um, but yeah you see what they've done with this game they put all this effort into the loading and making sure it's loading new little bits of code as the game loads and executing them and updating the screen. I don't know exactly what it's doing. Maybe it can put specific commands in the tape data to draw objects while it's loading. It's quite funky. Yes, uh, thank you, Alpha. It is always appreciated. And um, say, so if you've got any specific Spectrum games you'd like me to have a look at, let me know and I can drop them in the list but yeah there aren't many spectrum games that tell a story while the game loads 
Um, so this one's kind of, I think it's unique in that sense. There are some that have got some screens, but not this level of presentation. <laughs> Your mission, should you decide to accept it, stop the tape otherwise, is to breach the lunar defences. Yeah, this is this is something if you know you, you watch a streamer and they just quick load everything, you miss out on. Because if you load a snapshot, you're not going to see this loading. Uh, your first machine was a Spectrum. Yeah, mine too, and there's a lot of nostalgia associated with it. I mean, these aren't all games I own. This isn't the game I own, but you know, when I found out I had this funky loader, I thought, you know, I better I better show this one too. I had a lot of Codemasters games. I don't think I've even featured a Codemasters game tonight. Um <laughs> I, I really love the creativity on some of these loaders. Um, and th this is one of them. Because it, it required a lot more effort to do something like this than just use the standard, you know, basic loader or one of the standard copy protected loaders. This is, you know, this is custom made for this game. And, uh, you know, they are overlooked these days because people just want to fast load them. I mean, we'll speed up now a bit. It's got a few more messages. Let's cut the credits. A few more messages on screen. But there we go. The game itself... Um, not worth the load, if I'm, if I'm all honest. In all honesty, but... Um, keyboard. Uh, I don't know what the controls are. But... Um, it's a fairly standard... Shooter. It's not awful, but there are far better shooters on the system. At C64 games, sometimes I have music in the loaders and things like that, which is quite funky. But yeah, lots of the tape systems had custom loaders. And um, like I say, they do tend to get overlooked with people doing streams and showing off games these days. Because even if you get like the long play videos of games, they very rarely show the loading sequences. And sometimes it's the loading sequences I remember more than the games. Yeah, I know that's a strange thing to say, but sometimes the loading sequences were better than the games, or the title screens were better than the games. The loading screens. Although when you think about it, loading screens, you were spending about uh, two minutes loading a tape without ever actually loading the game. <laughs> Whereas you could have just saved two minutes and not had a loading screen, but the loading screens were part of the magic. Uh, point blanking me. Always a great shoe to design that when things fire where you are. Yeah. What's Invader Load? Is that one with the uh, Space Invaders clone? Uh, no. I know Joe Blade 2 on the Spectrum has a very crude Pac-Man game. I mean, I do I do kind of like the way you can destroy lots of the background elements in this, but other than that, it's, say, it's a very plain game where your ship is too big, things point blank you. Clearly Xevious inspired with the, the bombing ground targets. Yeah, there was something magical about it, Alpha, you're right. And all the slightly different tones you had to the sounds, or when you got, when you got a loader that was a bit different, um, or, you know, you got a typing thing in the uh, magazines and could record your own game with different coloured borders, that was always fun. Even though those that was the most simple of modifications you could do to the loader, but I do remember doing that now and again. But yeah, you can tell why nobody really remembers the game here, but I think it was worth showing for the loader. Um, I'll have to have a look at my list, see if there's any other funky loaders in, on that. I know there's one with a really unusual loader, but again, I don't really like the game. Just in terms of the sounds, I might put that on for... Um, just just for the sake of it. Nice nice two overlay, like a channel there, actually. That's a nice little effect. Um, because you do tend to 
get used to certain loading sounds, be they regular ones or turbo ones. And then you, you will hear the odd loader that is completely out there in terms of how it sounds. So yeah, I'm going to put a game on like that next, I think, but probably not play the game because I don't know how to play the game. Yeah, very serious like. Uh, problem is you, you move quite slowly. See, there's even a coin slot there. They, they were clearly arcade fans here. Well, I've bombed the coin slot now. I'm not going to be putting any coins in that slot. Oh dear. But yeah, cl clearly some arcade fans made this. I, I, I can't say it's a bad game. It's just shooters from this period tend not to rage that well. It's it's playable. Um, yeah, the funky the one of the funkiest loaders. I rem remember. Um, but I I don't know how to play the game. Would be. Um, this one. Is it one to eight? I don't remember. I think it loads on a one to eight model. <laughs> such a complex story for such a simple game. Yeah, you can tell they spent all the time on the loader. Um, so th this this sounds nothing like a Spectrum game and it loads. You get your, your basic load of loads the basic program. But after that. That sounds more that that you know the initial tone there sounds more like uh, some of the Japanese computers in the Spectrum. It's not your standard standard uh, loading tone even for a turbo loader. The C sixty four ROM load is super slow. Uh, the C sixty four was super slow on disc too, wasn't it? I remember somebody with a C sixty four disc drive and it took it just about as long as the tapes. Okay, this is say this is such an odd sounding loader, if, not what I expect to hear on a Spectrum. It is it's a turbo loader, but it doesn't have the usual um, the, the standard pulse tones. It's uh, an odd sound. It uh, I don't know how to play the game, but it was one that uh, I remember having an odd loader. Q A O P, five is space. Apparently those are the keys. High scores at Titanic. That's um, optimistic. So league table. Okay. Enter boat name. Sunk. Hull. No, I don't live in Hull. Oh, I can go Ward. I don't know. Races. Uh, what do? So. I guess I'm sailing, but I don't really feel in control of much. I go backwards and forwards. Um, maybe this is a good game <laughs> but I don't even know where I'm meant to be going and also there's no sound that I can tell hmm Druid on the CPC has music it's low does the fake version have something similar I don't think it does. I don't think you can play sounds while the Spectrum game loads right direct from memory. I think it, the uh, ports conflict or something. I don't actually remember now. Um, at least beeper music. I don't know if you could do it with the, an AY. Um, but um, I, I, I I'd completely forgotten which uh, CPC game had the music actually, so now you've reminded me of that. I'm actually going to have to note that down to have a look at the future. Yeah, I don't know how to play sailing. It's just got a funky loader. Um, so I'm going to write down Druid for the CPC for another stream. I'm not aware of any Spectrum ones that do have music while loading. I'm not sure you can do it. Um, oh, I can move all those up to the top of the list. Right, what are we on? Where are we on for time? On two hours eighteen, which is pretty good going. Um, that one I can move up. So I'm just tidying up my list so that it's easy to find things as I go through the stream. Um, okay, one that was requested earlier um, by Steve. Steve, if he's still in here, uh, no. And um, this is scuba dive, and this is one I had as a kid.
Uh, yeah, we had a we had a play of AMC earlier, Ryderac, with the uh, Mastermind loader, which was quite a funky loader with a mini game. Horace and the Spiders. Yeah, I remember Horace and the Spiders. And Hungry Horace. And of course, Horace goes skiing. Um, you remember you remember sailing from the C64? Did, did you know how to plant the C64? I mean, it, it, the controls look simple, but it doesn't seem to tell you what you're actually meant to do. I'm assuming the actual inlay would if you had the inlay. Which specky game had the greatest music? Um, my personal favourite tune is the Hydro Fool one. Although I do love a lot of the uh, Codemasters games, the, the, some of the Disney music and the like. Uh, they've got some really good tunes. Um, no, we've not listened to many specky tunes, because uh, we've been looking at a lot of older games, as, um, 48k ones. So we've not covered many AY tunes, but yeah. Sorry, I'm, I should speed through this rather than chat. So this is one of your classic sort of risk-reward games. Um, which you'll see shortly. Right, skill uh, one. I have to remember the controls. So, you're on your little boat. You jump into the water. Okay, that is that. Have right. we actually got any controls set up? <laughs> Okay, so that's rotate that way, that's rotate that way, that's right, okay. So, on you, you see you've got your oxygen, you've got your depth meter, and you swim through the ocean. And you've got your little, like, pearls and treasures, so uh, don't swim into the water, don't swim into the ground, though. Otherwise, you know, that, that will happen. That, that was a fail. And... Um, Basically, you've got to try and get the pearls and other treasures and get back to the boat. But the deeper you go, the more dangerous it is. And obviously, the higher the chance of you not getting back. So, you know, I've got one pearl there. I'm holding, you know, 20 worth of pearls. 20 worth of treasure. Get another one there. You say you crash into the ground, you lose it. And then you die. <laughs> I'm not even doing a good job of getting the basics back at the moment. Um, Agent X has a great beeper tune, yeah. 15-year-old 15, 15 Tim Follin. I didn't realise he was that young when he did that one. So, you know, these, these are the basic pearls. I could take this back to the boat now and get the 20 points. There's not much point in doing that, though, to be honest. Um, I'm being pursued by fish. Um, oh, dear. That didn't turn out too well. Let's try again. Do you get the bends when you come back up? No, you do not. I think the only controls are rotate and swim faster. Oh, no, just rotate. Space doesn't actually seem to make you swim. So let's uh, go along the bottom here. You see, all these things in the water want to kill me. Yeah. Th I think I had Agent X2 as a kid, not the first game. But Agent X2 is the one with the breakout level, isn't it? Arkanoid level. Part of me thought there was a swim faster button than this, but maybe there isn't. It's been a long time since I played it. But anyway, you see, you go to the the deeper sections here, if you can get down there. I mean, obviously the octopus does not want you going down there. Let's go, let's go past him. Or her. So you see, you've got different types of sea life down here, and you've got a, you've got bigger, bigger clamshells down to get the treasure out of. See, that one's worth uh, much more, much more. 
So, you know, it's more dangerous down here. There's more chance of not getting back to the surface in time, but there's more points to be had. So we swim along the bottom, but you can go even further down, you see. And if we time this right, no. Yeah, okay. So you see right down here, at the depths of the ocean, right down in the bottom of the marina trench or wherever we are, um, I think we find even higher scoring items. But look, look um, my oxygen is quite low. Well, it's not that low, but I've got to get back out of here without dying. I think it, if you have to go from the side into the caves at the side on this one. I think it, okay, it's been a long time since I played this. Yeah, it's in the caves at the side down here, isn't it? Underwater treasure hunting. But uh, is there anything in here? So there's a there's one that I could have got, but I didn't. Another one down here. <laughs> yeah, if it's closed, you die. Um, or you don't die, you just lose what you're carrying. Yeah, sorry, say 50. So, what's this down? Is this air? I think that's, I think that was air. I can't remember though. There's a proper treasure chest. So, you get that. See, that's 250. So I can't I can't remember if this is actually an air replenishment thing. It doesn't seem to let me pick it up, so maybe not. You see, if I can get out with a 250, that's the biggest prize there is down here. But obviously, you've got to you've got to consider how much oxygen you've got and if you can get out and also not get lost. I mean, it's quite a maze. My oxygen supply did increase. Okay, so it just didn't make a sound. So the, the sound design is uh, pretty minimal here. But again, this is an early game. It's 83, I think. And it's, it's a, quite a creative idea. Sending you deep sea diving for the pearls. And I, I mean, I never... I don't think I ever got many from the bottom as a kid. I just went for the ones at the top because that was the safest thing to do. It did keep me occupied for a while, and I was always impressed by, you know, the size of this octopus and the animation on it. And then weaving in that, it's a bit frogger-like as you're weaving in out of all the, the sea life. Yeah, it is impressive for back when it came out. So I could go for more of the, the pearls. Um... Where's the way out? Huh? Have I gone the wrong way? Oh, no, no, it should be good. It should be good. This should be octopus here. Yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. Managed to squeeze past him. But, uh, now where's the boat? <laughs> you got to find the boat. The, I don't think there's a radar, so you've literally got to go along until you find your boat. Yeah, Plaquemine on the Joe Blade 2. It's a very simple loader, David. I might have a look at it in a bit. Um, very, very simple loader, very simple Pac-Man gaming. Now, don't crash into the boat, because the boat will kill you. Uh, it is important you uh, you do this correctly, and you swim into the back of the boat, into the ladder. Yeah, or don't, because don't, if there's no swim faster button, then how do I get up there? I don't remember how to get on the boat. Or swim faster. Maybe I'm missing a button. Anyway, so the, the, the uh, map does the loop, so the boat will come back around. I'm just trying to find out if there was a way to... S I don't know. I can't quite remember. All I know is you can get back on the boat, and if you get back on the boat without crashing into it, you get your, you know, your reward for what you've collected. But uh, we should probably move on very shortly. 
So really well animated uh, sharks and stuff as well. Kind of scary. Abzu is a remake. I don't know, Trauma Stormer. I've not played Abzu. Come on, where's the boat? Where is the boat? It's quite a wide map. Um, I'm sure there must be a better way of doing this. Feel like there's there's the boat. So yeah, there we go. See, and I get the score from the, uh, the what what's being held. So you know, two hundred and fifty points, and go back in and get some more. And say so you repeat that and try and get as much as you can before you die. I've probably played it a little bit too long now, so move on. But they say that's one of those classic games I had as a kid, and one that I you know I always remember enjoying. Um, yeah. This uh, Joe Blade, Joe Blade is one of these cases in the software list where we really need to sort it out because all the Joe Blade games are listed as clones of each other because it was automatically generated. Um, but yeah, uh, loading game. Sub Acuatic, Sub Acuatic is a uh, modern game similar to that. I've not played that one. Is that another Spectrum one or uh, actually on modern platforms? But um, yeah, Joe Blade Two has this loader, as uh, David Martin there in the chat mentions. We've already seen one loader game with um, Astro Marine Corps today, but this one's probably a little more impressive. And it's amazing that a lot of people still think that because uh, Namco got a patent on game loaders, get games while games load on the PlayStation, that Namco came up with the idea, but you know, this is 1998, this is way before any Namco stuff, but you see, you've got a very simple Pac-Man game. Now, you can go straight through the ghosts if they're moving towards you, because, it, well, not in that case, and not in every case, in some cases you can go through the ghosts, I don't know the exact case, in some cases you can go through them. I mean, it's it can only process a tiny amount every frame, because most of the CPU time is being taken up by the game loading and the loading code. And it can't really, if, you know, if it starts missing game data because you're spending too much time playing the game, processing the game, that doesn't work. So, you know, these things have to be squeezed into a tiny bit of uh, tiny bit of uh, CPU time. But again, it's kind of impressive that you've got this little Pac-Man thing uh, while Joe Blade 2 loads. See, so I think that's the fastest it can actually redraw the maze without affecting the loading. Uh, you know, it can only move or draw that many dots at a time. They've got a very limited time slot. But yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, yes, it, it just again proved that these loader games were around a lot, a lot before. A, uh, any kind of PlayStation loaders, any kind of you know playing, was it Galaxian, uh, Galaga Wow, it was Galaga Wow, um, one of the Ridge Racer games loaded, was it Galaxian, I can't remember, but uh, yes, these 8-bit computers definitely had that feature long before then, so I suppose if you want to look for prior art, but you know, these exist, although maybe they, the Namco one specifically for a uh, CD, I don't remember now. But it's not really a novel concept, It's it had been done before. But yeah, I could play this for five minutes, I can speed through it now, you get the idea. <laughs> wow, well, uh, safe spot, the AI does not find me here. Ridge Racer is Galaxian, uh, Ridge Racer Revolution is Galaga 88, uh, thank you Mo. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So, Joe Blade 2 itself. Um, I mean, let's pause. Whoops, attack. That's, can I attack? I don't know. It's, uh, I, I don't know what I'm doing. 
and I don't know what the controls are and I can't say I never really played these Joe Joe Blade games they never really appealed to me yeah in Major Havoc you could play Breakout while you shoot with traveling to the next level you could indeed that was a nice little bonus um, yeah I don't know how to play Joe Blade I know you can walk around you go between the rooms I don't know if I have to find a weapon first pick up the dustbins it's well presented, but uh, in monochrome, though. Apparently, I get points just for... Do I get points for kicking him in the face, basically? I don't know. What am I doing? But apparently, I'm looking for dustbins. Say, I don't know. I've, I've never spent enough time to really know what I'm doing with these, these games. And I keep pressing space when I don't press space. Go here. <laughs> yeah, the Pac-Man loader was more fun than the game. I, I, these games did have a following, but I never really got into them. Um, so we'll probably just move on. I've collected five bins. Some nice A1 music. Ten extra keys and 500 points. Well, there you go. I don't think we need to play Joe Blade 2. That was just a case of show the loader. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> this is going to be an odd one. This is one that I struggled with as a kid. But uh, Since Euro Truck Simulator and the like are so popular these days, let's have a look at something a bit earlier in the same genre. And this is from the uh, legendary Pete Cook, who did many a great game on the Spectrum and ported a few really good things to the Spectrum too. Um, stunt Car Racer, I believe, you had a hand in the Spectrum. Now, this has got a um, this black and yellow border. And I think they've intentionally chosen those colours to match the title screen. Because the title screen's got the you know the uh, yellow headlight and the uh, hedgehog in the shadow there, and I think they've intentionally chosen these border colours to match that, which is kind of again kind of fancy. Still, it's a simple you know turbo loader, but it fits the game. The actual game, um, hmm, uh, yeah, it's a truck simulator. <laughs> Define keys, accelerate, decelerate, left, right, fire slash gears. Simple controls, lorry size, you can have a nice big one or we can have a short one. Obviously longer lorry, more capacity, more difficult to drive. So let's have a longer lorry. Um, so you work for a delivery company, you do coal, oil, fruit, veg, timber, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. No phone. Uh, we can load. No loading bay. Can't do much here. Could also always resign. I'm assuming this came with a map or you just learnt the map. I don't know. But, you, you know, you speed up your truck. Now, this, the steering does not auto-centre. You have to take care of your steering and your gears and drive this truck around. And obviously take it to the place it's meant to go. And, and don't over-steer and crash and... Yeah, I, I hmm. Yeah, some of the turbo loaders, uh, especially things like the bleep loader, weren't really faster, were they? Uh, I'm not sure bleeps were turbo, but it any any of the bleep loader games took forever to load. See, I'm in a dead end now, and uh, this this is a problem. <laughs> this is a problem because reversing trucks is uh, tricky. Oh, we don't want to go into reverse like this. Um, yeah. No. No. So center the steering. Uh, see, I, I'll end up crashing the truck. There we go. Oh no, I, I managed to make it around this corner. Um. <laughs> I 
I know it's thrilling stuff, isn't it, this one? Uh-oh. Oh. oh. So it doesn't centre the steering, so you have... I crashed. <laughs> Three-point turn. As you can see, the driving is going really well. You can get speeding fines. You can have repair... Let's say it's Euro Truck Simulator 8-bit edition. It is a bit easy for the smaller truck. I, I never knew where to go as a kid. Honestly, I just drove around and crashed a lot. Uh, but I still kind of have fond memories of it just as you know a driving simulator that was a bit different you know it wasn't your super sprint or your championship sprint or anything like that it was a driving simulator where you kind of had to actually try and drive the thing um you know pete cook was good at these um thinking games semi-simulations and that's what this always felt like so there's no interesting sound effects but the uh, the, in the interesting side of the game comes from nothing else was doing this. Nothing else was having you drive around with, say, relatively complex turning mechanics and reversing mechanics. And, yeah, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm meant to be picking up. But I never especially cared. It was just sort of fun to just do this. There's a loading bay here for fruit and veg. So if I stop here. I don't know. I'm n never sure how to actually. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> get stuff in the, the truck. But. <laughs> yeah, they, they should. Uh, Give everybody this to play to train them. Now I'm just driving. Now I'm driving in circle, and I broke the truck again. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, I, I did nothing again. And destroyed the lorry. Not very good at that, but it's a uh, say. It's one I have a uh, fond memories of. Uh, like quite a few Pete Cook games actually. Um, now. What shall I look at? What shall I look at? What shall I look at? Um, shall I look at an arcade port? A recent arcade port. Let's load this one. This is Terrapins. Oh, loading one files with turbo tape. Yeah, when the uh, sometimes loading the turbo tape loader would take longer than loading the just loading the data. Yeah, um, there are cases like that too. A bit like say the loading screen is taking longer than to load in the games in some cases. So Terra pins. Obviously, this is an arcade port. The original game is Konami game from '81, and this is a port from uh, 2017. Done with AGD, like. Um, have we looked at any other AGD games? AGD games yet? Maybe. It's a, a tool to help you make games on the Spectrum, which is also now on the Amstrad. Good evening, Peter. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Uh, welcome to the stream of Spectrum games. We've got about 20 minutes left. I don't know if you grew up with the Spectrum, but uh, it is one that I grew up with. And here we go, an arcade port. Don't, don't, well, don't crash straight into the things. So you get the little turtle on the back, you take it to the exit, and it blinks with a cute little animation in the corner. Can't get more than one question mark at once. Say so this is, I'm going to the wrong corner. This is an arcade port. A recent one, from a couple of, well, four years ago now. And it's really well done, with some nice AY tunes. Blow those up in the mines, and that one gets angry. That was a bad idea. 
American Truck from Terranet Japan is a much better trucking simulator game. I played American Truck on a different stream, didn't I, Aussie guy? It was uh, on one of the Japanese home computers, I believe. Oh, I'm not doing very well. Not even completed the first level on Terrapins. The Mr. Do Death song. Mm, I'm not sure why the Mr. Do Death song's in this, because you would have thought they would have gone for something not associated with a different arcade game, but... Uh... Up in the top corner. Yeah, this is one of those, uh, we talked about this game on another stream, I don't think we played it, but it's one of those where all three arcade versions are quite different, and I think the one called 600 feels like it could be almost a prototype version, and the versions issued by Sega and Konami also have some quite significant gameplay differences. So, if you played this in the arcades, it's entirely possible you didn't play the same version as everybody else, because there were multiple different versions out there and I think this is just based on the most common uh, version which was Turtles. These do get quite aggressive. From the Sinclair building this time, this case I don't. I, I very much doubt Sinclair had a building that big in the uh, the eighties. But um, probably the same for most of these companies. They always show themselves in massive buildings with the company logo printed on. But um, I guess a lot of them actually operated from quite small offices. You know, all the cityscapes and games with <laughs> where it looks like the the company that made the game owned the city. Oh dear, that was silly. That was silly indeed. That was even sillier. <laughs> Am I driving a safety racer? Uh, possibly in the previous game, Juggernaut. This is a, a well done rendition of the game, I would say. As I say and the other thing, I mean, I mentioned at the start, it, it's great to see after all these years, you know, people still making games for a system from the 80s. It, it just shows you how loved the system was and how much it affected people, how important it was to. The, the whole gaming scene. I mean, I know you can say that it gets, a lot of the games are ugly, but there's so many games we wouldn't have today, and so many people who wouldn't be into the games industry and into programming if we didn't have things like the, the Spectrum. And it's still a good start for people now, uh, learning to program, putting games out, and um, it's it's almost still serving that original purpose, even all these years later, of, of teaching people few things about programming games, even though the language is different, the concepts are the same, getting a good idea for a game and, and putting it all together. A lot of um, very early Konami games have type in the title, type 102 being renamed to Jungler, and that might also be why you think 600s could be a prototype. That's what Aussie guy is saying in the chat. So yeah, 600 by Konami is a version of this, which could be a prototype. And if Konami did also name some of their other prototypes as numbers, maybe? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe there's other, maybe 102 and 600 have other significant um, meanings that I'm not aware of. And, but yeah, I I can see that. There are a lot of things where we have really have no idea if they're prototypes or not. Um, where shall we go next? Um, 
I'm going to go with this one just for the for being technically impressive. Could be type 600. Yeah, that's that's what I was getting from what you were saying, Aussie guy. Um, program fat. It is Fat Worm Blows a Sparky. And yes, that is the real name of this game. Again, this is a, a very odd concept. And a very ambitious piece of code, as you will shortly see. Space one QA. Okay. So it's a full 3D game which actually doesn't run too slowly on a spectrum. And it's got you know it's got proper shaded graphics. Vector, vector style shaded 3D graphics and, and you've got hills and you go up hills. And you can shoot things. You can collect these things. Um, and then you can fall down. And go up this one. And things have shadows. You see the thing, thing flying around there has a shadow on the ground. And, uh, yeah. Oh, I missed it. The fact this exists on a, a spectrum to me is, is uh, you know, my, I missed that one at the end, haven't I? Yeah, that's that's higher up. I, I have to go back up to get that. Looks like Silver Lion from Taito. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, the, the gameplay is is different. I think this is more a collectathon. I said I never really got anywhere in it as a kid, but I was always impressed by it. I mean, you, you say you don't see proper three D moving around at a decent frame rate, and say it might be a little faster than it's meant to be in main, but it's still runs well on original hardware because I remember owning it on original hardware. Um, uh, where's my way out of here? I trap myself. Oh no, I can go under there, so that's a bridge. Oh, I've got a thing on my tail. I think... The So I don't want things on my tail. That's bad. Yeah, we were laughing at the name before, but uh, I don't know why they gave it that name apart from it. It does kind of describe the gameplay. Uh, maybe they just didn't know what to call it, a game with such a, such a head of its time game mechanics, really. Oh, a disc there. This did not come on disc. And no, it, did not, it also did not predict the, the future with floppy disks. Um, but yeah, as for what I'm doing, um, uh, <laughs> that part I'm less sure of. So this is four. Is this gate four? Area four? Something four? Does it mean I've got four items? Um, I don't know. But yeah. I think the more these things end up on your back, the closer to death you are. Mm. <laughs> I thought I was. Uh, I thought the sparkies were the things I was firing. I could be wrong. Oh, I hit the ball. No, nope, don't hit the ball. But uh, yeah, I probably won't spend too long on this because, admittedly, early 3D games probably aren't the best thing to be watching. Stern's Journey was originally titled Type 110. What about the. Uh, UPL uh, Ninja Kid 2. That's got a, a silly name with a number in it that makes no sense. RT104. I can't remember. I know, I know it's like, well, that's an odd clone. And the only difference in that, I think, was the title screen. Anyway, yeah, uh, this is a game about fat worms blowing sparkies, apparently. And um, it's an impressive technical game uh, from a technical point of view. On the spectrum, proper 3D rendering on a Z80, 
runs pretty well too really um can't complain about it let's have a look at uh, when we played the mega drive port off this is another modern development yeah that is I say again the people people were doing really special things back in the time and um, maybe it doesn't really get talked about much because of the really silly title but it's it's one of those games that was far ahead of its time for what it was doing so this is Tourmaline this is the Boulder Dash type clone that we played on the Mega Drive and the original version was on the Spectrum from a couple of years earlier so we'll have a look at this Yeah, I didn't play the game before, Bob. I think we just talked about it. Um, this fat worm. So this is the one where we played the Mega Drive version. I think it was commented that the uh, it's the closest to sort of 8-bit chip tunes people had heard on the Mega Drive. Yeah, there's things like a uh, Driller and, and Castle Master, aren't there, on the 8-bit? So they're very, very slow. The impressive thing about that one is it actually runs fast as well. This is your collect the thing, collect all the items, Boulder Dash type clone. There we go. So these types you think are pretty much like code names. Put a bomb there, blast those out the way. Don't stand there. Hmm. Do, do I start to have to start naming every game as type something? I, I know I know a type that was released. Our type was released. But um. I'm surprised I've not put R-Type on. The Spectrum port of R-Type is pretty good. But we are running out of time now, unfortunately. That wasn't the desired effect. Yes, yeah, so a fast-playing, smooth scroll... It's, it scrolls by Taz, but it's still a smooth scrolling a boulder dash type of game on the specy and like i said we did play the mega drive port of this which is a little more impressive but still again if you had this back in the day i think you'd be very happy with this there were some good boulder dash games on the spectrum actually some of them on cover tapes um, things like earth shaker and bite the dust i remember being good got to use a real CPC hands-on at the Midwestern Vintage Computer Festival last month. Pretty nice machine. All in. Yeah, I did like my CPC, Mr. Ogner. Um, I, I might need to do a CPC stream at some point, but um, sadly a lot of the more interesting developments on the CPC don't run, because MAME's emulation just is more lacking. Spectrum is mostly down to timing issues. Um, CPC, a lot of the effects just don't work. Anyway, say that that's a, a fun little Boulder Dash game called Tourmaline that we played also on the Mega Drive. Um, we are quickly running out of time on the stream, um, and I really should have a look at um, Rockman.
not that Rockman, uh, Spectrum's Rockman. An Apple II stream. Again, I don't really know enough about the Apple II to do a stream, Bob. It's not one that I ever experienced. Yeah, that's an impressive little World Dash game. Wait or else. So, uh, yeah, we are practically on the three-hour mark. I'll probably make this or the game after it the last game and maybe have to do another Spectrum stream at some point because I've got a whole list of games here that I did want to cover, but I could probably get another three hours out of this and I do want to be switching over to um, Zypho's Amstream and looking at some Amstrad CPC stuff in a bit. And he is doing a 007 theme night where they play the uh, licensed James Bond games and try to complete all of them. Have Arby be the co-host. Arby would know a lot more about the Apple II than I do. Didn't know uh, MAME supported Specky and tape loading in such detail. Um, it does a, a fair job. Say, so just anything that relies on accurate timings tends to fail. But um, define my keys. Up, down, left, right. Dig. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is a puzzle platformy game um, you're going to get the mushrooms and not be killed you can go up and down these elevator parts otherwise you fall down and you can bash tiles um, they fall down and if you walk on the scores they kill you and you can push blocks too like that um, I've trapped myself. Uh, not good. And that's why there's a restart. There is a restart button. I think I pressed the uh, restart entire game button. You can take out blocks like that. I don't want to hit that thing because that will kill you. And it gets a little bit load runner like in how you've taken out the blocks too. So take that, that there, take out that there, can fall into that and get those. And there we go. That's that screen done. Yes, not to be confused by uh, Capcom's uh, Rockman Mega Man, which is probably what most people will think of. But no, this is completely unrelated. This, I believe, was a, a budget game back in the day. So you can't climb up to get that mushroom. You have to get that from above. But it's one of those where you learn the mechanics. And um, I think this is an original puzzle game. I don't think there's anything else with these exact mechanics. Which is kind of one of the things I find impressive about it. Right, how are we going to get this? Not like that. <laughs> Maybe we can try and get this one first quickly. And that's uh, cheeky. Yeah, this is one you do have to load in 48k mode, otherwise it glitches out quite badly. I didn't even get to play roller coaster, which I really wanted to play. Hmm. Also, I think this was one of my first experiences with passwords on levels. You think he may have been created with a slightly different name based on his note? Are, are you saying this? This this is uh, this is Cubert, not Rockman. But yeah, the mazes get more complex. Um, 
say, and I've trapped myself. Um, so you do have a restart button. Anyway, you say Rockman. I, I, it's a puzzle game I really like, and say one one of my favourite puzzle games on the spectrum. Actually, that one, and definitely one to play if you want a good little puzzle game in 48k mode. Basic sounds and everything else, but um, yeah. Uh, right, where are we going now? I say I want to do probably one last game. I'm just actually I, I want to show something. Isn't it? Okay, let's let's finish with not a good game, but um, something just to show how to load a more difficult case. Because again, I, I get asked this sometimes. So some games you can't just go J Shift P Shift P. You also have to hold down right shift left shift i to get code and then load the game these are the ones that don't have a basic loader and just load straight into the machine code there aren't many games like this it's mostly earlier ones uh boris i don't know why it says boris but there you go you did lower the tone slightly mo yes so this bomb scare was also known as Short's Fuse and is basically a prequel to uh, Bomb Fusion, which is one of my favourites. Um, I'm going to have time for a little bit of Bomb Fusion, maybe because this is terrible. You're not even going to contact Sam Cruz and that... Uh, that's a good game. Oh, this isn't even top of the high score table. I don't know if you can even skip the music. Uh, uh, warning at UXB. Try as you might, you've never got the IBM PC to load anything off tape port. I've no experience in that area, unfortunately, so I don't know. So, yeah, this one is a case of uh, collect the things in the playfield and you jump around and you lift. Now, I, I'm not going to say the person who designed this had played Bomb Jack, but an Egypt background, bombs, some similarities in some of the graphics. Yeah, I think somebody played Bomb Jack. Unfortunately, it's just a really bad game. <laughs> Wait for the lift. Jump on the lift. Jump back to get the item. Wait for the lift. Jump on the lift. Jump over here to get this item. It's uh, very, very clunky, this one. Missed. <laughs> It kind of also feels like it wants to be Chucky Egg with the way you bounce off the platforms if you jump into them. But again, it, it, it's it's not a patch on Chucky Egg. It's just a very slow and awkward platformer that had... This is level one, yes. See, the way you accelerate when you fall is very Chucky Egg too. It's sort of a mix of ideas that doesn't quite come off. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that did lead to a much better game though, which I think I have played on stream before, I hope we will play again to end the stream. I, I don't know what any of it was, Erratic PT. <laughs> Yeah, it's probably a bit like that on the, when you do that on the C64, Steve. There are, some games just have awkward ways of loading them. And if you don't know them, you might think they're bad, but um, they're not. Okay, so this is kind of similar. Let's select keyboard. It's clearly got the same characters. But the same little guy there. It must be the same little guy. And uh, this one... Is very flicky like I mentioned it earlier you've got to collect these balls and take them to the crate also you've got to keep putting out the bombs because if any of the bombs explode 
the radioactivity meter up there goes up and that uh, kills you. Yeah, last time I played this I couldn't find the jump key. Now I know where the jump key is. It's much easier. Although, if you want a challenge, try playing it without the jump key. Because that makes it much harder. But again, this is... Oh yeah, I've got enough to clear the level, haven't I? So, if the door turns white, you can get out of the level. That's fine. Otherwise, you can just keep doing it, I guess. Yeah, I think it runs a little too fast in MAME, this one. I remember this being a bit slow on hardware. Um, but, again, this is a really good platform game with some nice original ideas. A bit of a mix of Flicky and Bomb Jack. And yeah, if you let say that bomb exploded, that increased the radiation meter, which is bad. So don't let... And that other... The bigger one, though, is trying to steal the, the uh, smaller balls off you. Um, so, yeah. Um... Was, and the time on the bomb is in the bottom left corner, so you know when it's going to explode. So, so I've got five seconds left on that one. I have to get that quickly. And so you can sort of balance what you're doing. Doors turn white, I'm out of here. Now, I think this would have made a really good arcade game. You know, do some better graphics, up the difficulty a little bit, because it's slightly too easy. And you've got a game that's light flicky that isn't quite flicky. And say it's uh, it's a fun one. It is a little easy. I, I do remember being able to play this for a long time as a kid. Once you get it down, I think maybe you'd want the numbers on the bombs rather than having to look in the corner. There are definite ways it could be improved, but um, also you know the, the the graphics change a little bit, and it's colourful. This was also on the CPC, but the CPC version is much slower and less colourful, which kind of ruins it a little bit. It doesn't really evolve much, it just changes the graphics up between levels, the stage layouts change, it gets faster, uh, well, the timers get faster. But, uh, we can get out of here. There we go. So yeah, a, a personal favourite from back in the day, this one. I'd say it would have been nice if it was a 1-8 to eight game with some AY music or something, but gameplay first, as we've said. And um, that's what that's what makes this game. I didn't play this game for the music. I played this game because it's got that simple addicting quality that you want in any single screen platformer. And you've got thing. So you've got to keep an eye on the bomb time. You've got to keep an eye on other things. And it's it's really a perfect mix of, of uh, gameplay ideas. Just frustrating enough to not feel too easy. got to say risk reward decide if you want to clear out the bomb or try and take the things avoid that big thing we'll play this stage maybe another stage and then we will end the stream though because time is running very low got to get four more in um i say that am i going to make it got my four come on there we go get to the door <laughs> Who knew that Bomb Jack was influential? It's a, it's, it's a mix of Bomb Jack and Flicky, I would say, Aussie guy. It's got elements of both in. But if this is related, which I feel it is to the game we just uh, played before, because it looks like the same character, uh, I, I think the uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big improvement. <laughs> but anyway, I think yeah, we'll, we'll call it quits there, because... We are over the three-hour mark. We are almost 15 minutes over the three-hour mark now. And so I will switch I'll switch to my completely unused vertical mode. You see, no, no vertical spectrum game, sadly. No way you tip your TV on the side. I think somebody should make one. You know, shoot away, you rotate the TV. That'd be quite cool. But, um, yeah, anyway. I would like to say thank you to everybody for joining the stream. It's been good as always. And I know it's been a bit different. Playing spectrum games, no arcade games, nothing of the sort. But... You know, it's what I grew up with, and it's such an important machine. Um, I don't know how much of a role it played in arcade design, but in terms of, you know, the industry as a whole, 
it, it wouldn't be the same without it. And I've shown some good games, some bad games, some old games, some new games. And I hope there's some you hadn't seen before, some you some you maybe enjoyed, some you might want to go and check out for yourself. Not everything is in the software list because the software list still needs work. Most of what I've played can be found quite easily just by searching around though and you can load the loose tapes or add them to the software list yourself. So anyway, thank you Evie. I'll catch you online in a, a minute after I close the stream, but I'm, I'm glad you're still here and glad you're still watching. But hey, thank you everybody and say thank you Alpha for the uh, five euro donation earlier. That will come in handy for a few things. And, and good night, everybody. I will hope to see you on the next one. And I hope I've not put everybody off by doing Spectrum instead of the usual. But, I, you know, I, I wanted to do it. I, I've enjoyed it. And it's good going back to some of these and, and playing them again. So I'll catch you all next time.